Philadelphia, two and four, taking on the unanimous number one in the nation, Miami Hurricanes. And rookie head coach Larry Coker has his team coming off the high of highs for a Miami team. They beat Florida State at Florida State in dominant fashion. Now they've got bigger dreams to deal with. Welcome to the booth. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Jerry Punch joins us in a minute. Miami number one in both polls. Number four in that first BCS standings that came out back on Monday. So a little bit of a concern. How do you manage a team that's got to be deflated, not seeing that they're number one, and keep them going to get in the title game at the Rose Bowl? You know what? And this Miami team has been focused all year. You have to go back to last year where they felt collectively as a team that they should have been playing for the national championship. And when they came up short, all summer their focus was on getting back to that championship game so when the polls came out the, the bcs poll came out this team is is not really they're not really focused on the poll i think they're more focused on winning each game and letting everything else take care of itself and one of the reasons is is their quarterback ken dorsey he's one of the best quarterbacks that ever played in this school he has a 19 and 1 regular season record here he has 46 career touchdown passes three more and he breaks the records of those great quarterbacks from Miami but Dr. Jerry Punch Miami as a quarterback they have an offense and West Virginia is looking for either one or either the other what do you think Dr. Jerry Punch you're exactly right coach you know time and again we've seen how explosive this no huddle spread one back offense can be you know when it clicks and and uh, Mountaineer head coach Rich Rodriguez said it took about a year for this to really to sink in when he was the offensive coordinator at Tulane and Clemson he said but the key here is the quarterback he uses a basketball analogy he says the quarterback has to be the point guard he has to execute but he also has to be able to pull the trigger and shoot the three and their point guard is Brad Lewis the senior quarterback and Brad's had a little bit of trouble being consistent and making timely decisions indeed the uh, learning curve has been very steep the first six games, and Mike, it's not going to get any easier here tonight. No, it will not tonight, especially if it gets wet too, Doc. It feels like that saturated sponge, one more drop, and it's going to come down. Ominous clouds didn't spit rain earlier. They might in the next little bit. You see the humidity is very high, and so is the dew point. Miami won the toss, deferred the option to the second half, so Todd Sievers, the junior from Iowa, is set to kick it off, and Sean Terry, as you see, the best kickoff return man in the history of Mountaineer football. West Virginia's wins are over Ohio and Kent State. Their last game was a 10-point loss to Notre Dame a dozen days ago. Miami's number one, but they've got to keep proving it every time Joe meets leather. We're underway on Thursday night. Terry from the six. Taken down by Marquise Fitzgerald at the 22-yard line. Let's check out the West Virginia quarterback. As Jerry mentioned, Brad Lewis has to find a way to be more productive. He's struggling learning this offense and might be on a short leash here tonight. The Budweiser starting lineup show Avon Coburn four 100-yard games this year, second on the all-time rushing list, and a bunch of receivers that need to step it up. Somebody's got to try to hit a home run. Michael Page starts for Antonio Brown. The fourth leading pass catcher in the history of this school coming off the bench. Opening drive of the night from the 23 is the handoff on the delay to Coburn. First down to the 38 yard line. A pickup of 15 and a Chris Campbell tackle. The men who blocked for him, it's a pretty decent offensive line, maybe the best performing unit on the offense. Brad Connell, the right guard, is the lone returning starter. Zach Dillow, a solid center. Up front for Miami, Lee. Miami's off offensive defensive line is led by tackle number 91, Mark Walters. He's the leader, at quarterback, and he just got blocked right on his butt. <laughs> as Coborn, as I was Brad, talking about him. And Andrew Williams shaking up as he makes the tackle after the first down. Two plays, two good runs, and Williams is down. We'll check on him first. Let's get through the rest of the lineups. Jonathan Vilma normally starts out with an injury. Their top tackler, so Howard Clark in the middle. But this isn't a linebacker game, Kirk. With four receivers, a lot on the DBs tonight. Arguably the best defensive back, defensive backs in all of college football on one team. You're not only going to see these four and Buchanan and Rump outstanding in man coverage. You'll also see five, sometimes six defensive backs, and that's something that was, that uh, Miami will try to do. Because as Mike, you said, when you have four receivers coming at you, you got you try to match them up with uh, a lot of defensive backs. Well, on the 11-yard Coborn game, you see a frustrated junior from Tampa, Florida, Andrew Williams, who uh, injured his leg as he got hit from James Lewis, the strong safety coming in to make the play. 
What I was saying about the Miami defensive line, the tackle number 91, Mark Walters, is a number two tackler on a football team. He's smart. He calls all the lines adjustments. But that time they did a nice job of suckering him. They brought him in like it was a pass, Kirk, and then they blocked him aside and ran a nice draw play on him. They sure did. The first two plays, and th yeah. this, when, when we met with the uh, Miami coaches, they said their primary concern in this game was, believe it or not, the running game yeah. of, of Coburn because they spread you out all over the place, and you think they're going to throw the football, and then they use uh, use that advantage to get six defensive backs in the game, and then they use the numbers to run the football, and they've done that in their first two plays. Williams out, Jamal Green in his stead. After runs of 15 and 11, another run for Coburn, seeking the hole, but is brought down by Al Marshall. A lot of defensive backs will play, and Marshall, the freshman from Clewiston, Florida, was there. It'll be second down coming up for the Mountaineers. As Jerry alluded to at the beginning, you think of Tulane's success, yeah. with Sean King was the quarterback, and Clemson's success. Tommy Bowden is the coach, and Rich Rodriguez as the offensive brain, brains of the bunch, I should say. Fourth run, this time it's Coburn again, and the Miami defense four, fooled the first two times, or wise to it. Third and a long nine coming up. One thing about Avon Colburn, you got to remember, he ran the ball 26 times against Notre Dame with 169 yards, and one of them was a 60-yard touchdown run in the first quarter. So I agree with you, Kirk. I think if West Virginia is going to win this game, that's the key player on their football team. Needing to get to the 41 of the key. On third and nine, Lewis. Hit as he threw, incomplete. Well, the injury happened earlier to Andrew Williams. Jamal Green from Camden, New Jersey, replaced him, and there's no drop-off there. This is what is unique about Miami's defense. They're rushing with four. Most teams, when third and long, they're going to bring a linebacker or bring somebody from the perimeter. Here, Miami rushes four, and they're able to get to him with Green, obviously applying the pressure. Todd James with the punt, returned by Philip Buchanan. Pass the 20 with blockers. Buchanan at the 40, sees the punter, but Mountaineers coming to get him. And actually, his own man <laughs> takes him down at the 48-yard line. The net punt was minus one. Kicked it 38, returned it 39. <laughs> this is great blocking in Buchanan. This is like playing backyard football. He knows how to set it up, makes about three guys miss. Once he gets to the outside, now he has the wall blocks. Good pick up there. And now he tries to keep it going here. Look at he's not done yet. Remember one thing about Buchanan, he's the sprint champion of the Big East. The kid can fly. Yeah. So defensive back that's got tremendous speed. Speed all over the field. Ken Dorsey in the cane. Starts from the 48. And the first one to run here, Clinton Portis. Scoring the left side for a couple of yards. Corey McIntyre, the senior from Florida, made the tackle. He is fired up to play today. Going against a tough one, though. 19 and 1 as a starter. 11 touchdowns, 3 INTs. He has been solid. In the backfield on those Budweiser starting lineups, Clinton Portis and Najee Davenport. Davenport more of a threat in the pass game now. Andre da uh, Johnson at breakout game, 111 against the Seminoles. Beard starts for the injured Daryl Jones, who misses this game with a high ankle sprain. Excellent tight end, Jeremy Shockey. Second down long ball from Dorsey. Incomplete. Intended for Kevin Beard. And we mentioned gets the start here tonight. The sophomore from Plantation, Florida. Let's check out the offensive line for Miami. And it's pretty impressive. Rare occasion. Ken Dorsey actually got touched there and pushed down. The offensive line has done a great job. You have to go all the way back to the regular season last year against Temple. The last time this offensive line is allowed a sack. West Virginia's defensive front, Kevin Freeman, gets a start, and so does James Davis on the ends. Davis in for Tim Love at the starting point. This team, the Mountaineers, have given up 245 rushing yards per game. Only Houston and Navy behind them in the national stand. Third and seven, first down to the tight end, Shockey, at the 31-yard line. Pick up a 14, and a tackle made by Sean Hackett. Check out the rest of the West Virginia players trying to stop Dorsey tonight. Lee, how about their linebacking court? Number 34, Corey McIntyre is from Indian Town, Florida. He's the number three tackler on the squad. The thing I liked about him the most, 15 tackles against Notre Dame. Mila die 48, the free safety. First time he's ever played college football. True freshman was going to be redshirted because of the injury to Rick Sherrard, the top tackler in the Big East. He's on the field tonight. 
This running play gained only about a yard for the junior from Gainesville, Quentin Portis. We'll have second and nine coming up, and there is a die. He's from Valerico, Florida, and that's uh, quite a position to be thrown into. Welcome to college football. <laughs> Come back to the state of Florida. Number one for snap one of your career. After the Porter's carry of one second and nine for the number one team in the line. Covered left comes back to the right and could look to Epic Savage. First down of the 19. The best cover corner, Richard Bryant, made the tackle after a pickup of 11. It shows you how valuable an offensive line that can protect a quarterback. Quick three step drop by Dorsey. He wants to go left to Gathers, but he's covered. So he comes all the way back, makes the big throw. And that, that's something that you know, it doesn't show up in the stat sheet, but the offensive line there deserves a lot of credit for protecting Ken Dorsey. Also, the National Football League quarterbacks and National Football League scouts love that kind of movement from left to right with their eyes. First and ten, and in the red zone is the next one. Dorsey's quick pass is incomplete. Intended for Andre Johnson, senior high school here in Miami. His prep ball. I like the play calling of Miami here early, mixing the run and the pass. I thought in the, in the Florida State game in the first half, they were a little conservative on the road in Tallahassee. They came away with three yards rushing. Rob Chudzinski, the offensive coordinator, is doing a great job in his first year calling plays here at Miami. And I think he's learning on the, on the job. He really is doing a good job. And tonight, he's opening things up early to try to get the run again going later. Dorsey gives to Portis. Good tackle, loss of a couple of yards, and Grant Wiley, the sophomore linebacker, snuffed that out and made the play. Isn't it interesting when you see a football team that's so poor against the run as West Virginia, you say, well, why isn't Miami running over them? Because most of the yards against West Virginia, as we looked at the tapes, were on the option play. And Miami doesn't run the option play, so they're pretty good when you go against a two-back offense like this. That's right. They love to put eight men up. Yep. You see it all over college football. You try to outnumber the offense and try to get the numbers to stop the run. Three receivers. On third down, it's Shucky again. He'll be stopped short of the first down at the 15-yard line in a field goal situation for Miami. I know this is not much, but from the West Virginia side, of this game, this is a win. To keep the number one team in the nation from going down and scoring on the first drive and getting a field goal, and Mark went up in West Virginia. You're right. Todd Seaver's on to attempt the field goal. New snapper in Joe Fatagrassi, and it works out just fine. A 32-yard field goal. Fatagrassi steps in as the center now after the long snapper is out for the season. The loss to Florida State. So far, so good for Joe and the Canes. We welcome you back to South Florida. Feels like a summer night in Miami. Here in the final week of October. Very humid last few days. Near record temperatures the last couple of days. The Canes staying cool and leading 3 nothing. See Ken Dorsey solid on that nine play drive three of five a drop as well in that drive but all set up by the very nice punt return from Buchanan he gave Miami the ball in West Virginia territory the Seagulls kick off will force Cherry to take a knee and bring it out from the 20 yard line well, the senior from Shadyside over in Ohio, Brad Lewis, who just needs to make better decisions in this offense. Jerry characterized it best. There's pressure on you when you play quarterback in this spread offense, and you cannot afford to turn it over twice per game as he has in the four losses and a completion percentage of just over 50. Tremendous amount of pressure because there, there's a lot of demand at the line of scrimmage after each play. They're not going to get in the huddle. The big thing is he doesn't have the athletic ability of a Sean King. Or, or Woodrow dance them. So because of that, he has to make very good decisions and be very accurate with his throws to compensate for the lack of the athletic ability. First down, show of option, and on the outside, Coborn gets a first down. Jamal Green has been very active tonight. Gets him after the gain of 11. So Avon Coborn is picking up right where he left off from the Notre Dame game. 
first five carries 38 yards for the junior from New Jersey. Same play. And Coburn again with a good gain out to the 39 yard line. Pick up of eight. On Avon calling the first seven plays. Well, they should. He's had 14 100 yard games in his career. That's second highest in West Virginia history. The option play is going well because Miami is kind of playing real soft in the secondary with no support. I think this has caught Miami off guard. I don't believe they've seen it much. From the 34, Lewis will try to follow the blockers and not get anything. It'll be third and a couple coming up. What's happening, and we've talked about this, is Miami's a defense that likes to play back with two safeties. They're putting four other defensive backs into the game because you have four receivers. You can see here, with the four wide receivers all out there, Miami is spreading themselves out. See all out here, now it's third and short. They're gonna come in to see if they can stop this run. Lewis adjusting the play. Man coverage at the bottom of the screen, and Miami backs out defensively. Show him one thing, do the other. Lewis's pass is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. It was intended for Phil Braxton, the X receiver, the playmaker spot. Didn't do it when he had to. And Mike Rumpf and the Miami D come on. Nice job. A little bit of a high snap from Todd James. This is a much better kick, sending Buchanan back. Fields it on the bounce of the six. Everybody slowed down. They give Buchanan is going to let it go. And off he goes to the 24 yard line. A shake of the head. Now you're not going to do that from Sean Hackett after a 17 yard return for Buchanan, the starting cornerback. Tomorrow night, Friday night football, you'll see Fresno State and David Carr try to bounce back from the loss. They beat Colorado State in overtime, but couldn't get it done against Boise State at home. Now it's a trip to Hawaii. Hawaii team that's won its last three. You'll see it tomorrow night. Fresno State to the islands to take on Hawaii. And June Jones is on a scoring team. Movement by the tight end will make it first and 15. Rare mistake from Shockey out of Oklahoma. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Lee, you mentioned that West Virginia had a big stop, just forcing Miami to kick a yes. field goal. You're exactly right. One of the things that has hurt West Virginia all year, big plays. They allow a lot of big plays, usually at least four per game, over 30 yards. So if they can contain Miami, make them drive, not give up the big play, they have the ability to make uh, Miami earn. 15 to get this first down on the run. Andre Johnson made four people miss and gets it out to the 28-yard line. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, after the first defensive series for the Mountaineers, I know they give up three points on a field goal, but Coach uh, Corso was exactly right. When the defense came to the sideline, it was like they had won the football game. They have gotten some encouragement, maybe gotten a little bit of confidence. The coach is very, very respectful of the fact that this defense has been very porous throughout the first six games, had been able to stop the number one team in the nation in their opening drive. Watch if they play with confidence. Najee Davenport runs across the yellow line for a first down at the 36. Rover Angel Estrada from the Bronx. It's almost unfair to have Najee Davenport at fullback. 6'2", 242. Should be back at a tailback at almost any other football team in the nation. Kirk, I love the way he makes that good move, but he's got good balance. Don't you love him? You know, you know what? Of, of all the teams in the country, Miami does as good a job yeah. as anybody utilizing two backs and utilizing their athletic ability. Najee Davenport will catch the ball to the backfield. They'll run a dive with him. They get him out in the flat. They utilize him many, many times. It's another weapon for the team. Dorsey throws high and incomplete for Jason Gathers, who drove the corner on his side back about 30 yards. That guy was in Lauderdale. <laughs> he left Dade County at the snap and then went on to Broward County. Now watch the left hand, left corner. Number 19, Lance Fraser. It's his first start. Now, Lance is going to be a little bit afraid. Watch him. Now, he's starting right there. Now, he's in Dade County. Now, he's moving. He's going to Broward County. And now, he leaves and comes back right up to Orlando, right where I live. Orange County. 
Uh, That's okay, Lance. Don't let him behind you. That's, that's right. what the coach said. He's very young. Lance, whatever you do, don't right. let him behind you. Flag on the Canes here on this drive, guys. And that was the receiver downfield. Against the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first Illegal down. Illegal downfield. That's the second penalty of this drive. Larry Coker has one pet peeve about this Miami team. It's penalties. Averaging a 110 yards, as you see. The season long breakdown, it is the worst in the Big East. Five yard step back, first and 15. And Miami moved again. Five more. I made this statement after the Florida State game, Kirk. You and I were talking about it. I said the only team I think that could beat Miami right now is themselves with stupid penalties and lack of tackling. Now, these all these penalties are stupid penalties. Yes. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Jumping offside. Jumping offside. Now, field. Right. Field. All those things. Now, I know it's not going to hurt them against West Virginia, but they get against a great football team. And let me tell you, it's going to be the difference between them winning and losing the national championship. Lack of focus. Third penalty, all procedural as you see the rain begin to fall. In the historic orange bowl. Doors, he sends five in the pattern. High throw, incomplete. Well, Frazier was just waiting for Andre Johnson to come after him. He kept him in front of him again. You know, it's amazing. It, he was waiting on the outside. If, if if Johnson goes straight to the post, there's nobody in the middle of the field. <laughs> Frazier either uh, got lucky there. He's following that scouting report. The West Virginia defense statistically looks pretty good against the pass. But you need deeper inspection to find out why they are number two in the country in passing yards allowed. And the run for Clinton Portis gets him out to the 29 yard line. A third and 16. A passing down coming up for Miami. And the reason that Kevin Freeman and company have been very good against the pass is nobody does it against them. Look at the number of rushes there in that left hand column. Let's circle that for me. Thank you. How about that one right there? Notre Dame ran it 69 times in the game last week. Virginia Tech 56 and the defensive coordinator said it best. When you run against us very well, why are you going to pass? That's why there's such a disparity in the balance of the opponents. Third and 15. Dorsey on the run throws. It's complete. And they keep him shy of the first down. Ethnic Sands made the catch, but as you see, he's about a half yard short. Encouraging fans would like to see the number one team go for it. Well, the reason they'll go for it here is they're playing against one of the teams I think they should go for it because they're playing against the worst defensive team in college football against the run. You got Najee Davenport and Clinton Portis, but they're playing it by the book. I don't happen to agree with it. I think they could make that first down even, even if they didn't make it. West Virginia not going to go very far. <laughs> Freddie Capshaw well, on to punt. Faith in the Mountains tonight. Well, High snap, Capshaw brought it down. And Frazier going to let it go. It goes into the end zone for a touchback. 56 yard punt with no return for the junior Capshaw, who had a rushing touchdown against the Seminoles. 3 0 against the Mountaineers for number one tonight. Circuit City presents Expo 2001. 30 days of what's new, what's hot, and what's next. Featuring live demos of HDTV, digital photography, high-speed internet access, and more. All this month at Circuit City. Circuit City, we're with you. Why the hurry? It's the 2001 model clearance from Suzuki. It's your chance to get the best deal in the industry. Something no one else has. 0% APR for five years on all 2001 Suzuki's. Save up to $6,300 on models like the XL7, the only seven-passenger SUV in its class that comes with a third row of seats. So rush to your Suzuki dealer today or call 1-877-MY-SUZUKI. Offer ends soon. In a world of uncertainty, there will always be a need for those proud few who can prove they are a world apart. Maybe you can be one of us, the few, the proud, the Marines. 
We should get out of here now. This Halloween, <laughs> when it comes to evil, what the hell was that? It was a very bad ghost. There's no place like home. <laughs> 13 Ghosts Rated R starts tomorrow. College football Saturday. Tied for most wins with the Bear, Joe Paterno aims for the record books against Ohio State. Ohio State, Penn State, noon Saturday on ESPN. ESPN 2's Thursday Night College Football is brought to you by Suzuki. Rush to your Suzuki dealer today or call 1-877-BY-SUZUKI. And by Budweiser with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. Back at the Orange Bowl, a light rain falling in South Florida on this Thursday night. Number one Miami leads West Virginia 3-0. Matt Beer drive starts from the 20. Another first down run with Coborn who gets four. And Avon takes it out to the 24. His first down carries have been very impressive this far tonight. 15, a couple of 11-yard runs, and eight, and that one was four. Jerry Punch. And guys, first defensive series, take a look at number 99, uh, junior right in, Andrew Williams, who uh, came off the field. Uh, John Uribe, orthopedic surgeon for the Hurricanes, says possibly right MCL, mild strain, maybe back in the ball game. Right knee. Okay, Doc, we'll keep an eye when he comes back. The pass is complete to Cobra, who tried to make a man miss, but got pulled down at the 27. It was William Joseph coming off the defensive line to try to bring him down. Third and three coming up. Every time Brad Lewis steps to the line of scrimmage, he looks over the defense, he makes a call, the original call. He will look over to confirm, in many cases, over the coaches just to make sure they have the right play call. Option, Coburn throws down and more. Avon Coburn stays on his feet and takes it out to the 45. That's a pickup of 17 yards. And Avon already has 67 opening quarter yards. And all on the option play of big plays because what they're doing is Miami's got six defensive backs in there and they're playing the pass first and they're running. There's a nice little pitch in the option and an awful good block there by number 77, Lance Nemo. He gets in the back's face and does a great job. And the tempo of the West Virginia offense yep. has Miami off balance defensively. And the Hurricanes call a timeout. That's exactly what Rich Rodriguez just told his quarterback and his offense. Keep the tempo up. Let's keep them on their heels. Step aside for a moment from the OB. Nice aerial view of Miami, Florida. Here on this Thursday night, number one. Miami leading 3 0 over West Virginia. Mountaineers first and 10. They are going to reset the play clock. It was incorrectly started. Rich Rodriguez imploring as we saw him go to break tempo. Keep it up. West Virginia actually has a tight end in the game. Three receivers. Tight ends got two balls in the first five games and two against Notre Dame. Michelle Smith is the back. And as Lewis plays the chess game and hands to Smith. And the sophomore is pulled down by William Joseph. At Edison High School right over here in Miami. You can tell the Canes are sticking to their guns. A lot of confidence in their front four. Continuing to play with six defensive backs. There's the tempo that Mike mentioned. West Virginia is already ready to snap the football. Lewis got a block for a moment. Chasing was McDougal. The pass is caught by Sons Window. Who gets it out to the 34-yard line. First down. Marquise Fitzgerald made the tackle. That's what West Virginia's desperately needed for its receivers. Make a man miss. Pick up of 24. And now you have Miami on their heels because they're so focused on stopping the run that now all of a sudden, look how much easier it is to find some holes in that zone defense. And there, Swindle not only makes the catch, but he makes a move and gets up feet. It's his second catch of the year. First down, Cassell Smith was snuffed out by James Lewis, the senior from Rutgers Territory, Piscataway, New Jersey. I want to go back to a point where I made before, not second guessing. It was fourth down and less than a yard. You have the best offensive line in college football. You're the number one team in the nation. You got a 255 pound fullback, and you don't go for it. You leave the underdog in the game. They're getting more confidence. Stick it to them, Miami. Don't play around the edges. Five in the pattern. 
Lewis's underneath pass leaves Coburn nowhere to go. Linebacker covers with Chris Campbell on the play. I think in the first quarter, with the ball in your own 50, I understand. I understand what you're saying, but I think Larry Coker's thinking, you know what, I have confidence in my defense. We're going to kick the ball here and get the ball right back. I mean, that's why I'm sure what he was yeah. thinking. I mean, I hear what you're saying, big offensive line, but you're in your own 50 in the first quarter. Right? So I, I think he was think. wrong. Okay. So we have a difference of opinion. Miami brings in three new defensive linemen, fresh legs for third and a dozen on the pass rush. Lewis throws high, incomplete, and a penalty marker is down. So is Lewis, who took a shot on the pass rush. Yeah. Tim Brown, his own tackle, hit Lewis in the head, and that's why he's down now. It was a nice, legitimate sack, fair, but when Lewis went down, he hit Tim Brown, number 60, right around the thigh, and that whipped his neck. I think you keep your eye on number 60 here. He comes back into the picture, the offensive right tackle. Right there. And that's where he hit his head against 60s. Tim Brown's right hip, and I think he whiplashed his neck a little sure bit. I hope he's going to be all right. Wow. Now, Lewis is a tough guy. We saw him last year at Virginia Tech. He played with a hand that was so numb as the season went on, he could barely feel the ball. And Derek Jones, a redshirt freshman, is uh, prepared to go in, at least for the short term, for perhaps a while. Where is Huber Heights, Ohio? It's uh, the Wayne Warriors outside of Dayton, Ohio. Is that right? Yeah, Western Ohio. I knew you would know it. Now, let me tell you, that Derek Jones is a tremendous athlete. There he is. Yeah, Huber Heights. Circle. Warriors appreciate that. Well, good little. Yeah, come on. Well, but he, they moved into wide receiver this year because they thought that Marshall, the other uh, quarterback, and, and Lewis would be able to handle it when Marshall mm -hmm. went down with the injury. They moved, moved uh, Jones back to quarterback. And he's very athletic, and he's got a nice, strong arm. So we'll see uh, if he uh, gets out here. Let's, see, let's hope Lewis is okay. Yeah, yeah. Rich Rodriguez and uh, Avon Coburn coming to check on their quarterback. And as you see, he's just uh, certainly shaken up by the whiplash of hitting his lineman. As they check him, we'll step out for a minute. Back in Miami, and Brad Lewis is sitting up. As you see the. Doctors uh, in discussion, the Miami training staff there as well to add any assistance if they need. Now, Brad will finally get up and uh, get a very nice reception from the crowd here. One more look at the whiplash effect. It's Vince Wolfork with the, the pressure on the quarterback who hits him after he threw. And you see the side and hip area 200 uh, 275 pound offensive lineman was waiting there as Lewis was whipped into it the penalty flag by the way was offside against Miami so it's third and six for West Virginia and Derek Jones will come in the game and play quarterback it's perfect backup quarterback 36 against the Canes just I'd, the way you like it. I'd run a little option play Jones saw a lot of action, guys, against Virginia Tech, 9 of 23 Spread in that out. game. They run it inside. Colbert, first down and more. Across the 15 and to the 10. Boy, he delivered the blow on Ed Reed. First down coming up. They've been doing this the entire first quarter. They've been putting in four and five wide receivers. And you can see where they have them out, man. Look how many people are on the inside here for Miami. You have five guys with chance to be able to block four. You have a talented back like Coburn. You're going to be able to rip it in there for some big games. That was a nice trap play. The right guard, yep. Rad Coburn. Uh, lost the snap. Lost the snap. Miami has it. Oh, very interesting. They see West Virginia ball. Not exactly. They say West Virginia ball. I thought Will Fork fell on it between the quarterback's legs. Second down. Perhaps Jones had it the quarterback for a brief second while his knee was on the ground. That's a that's a yeah. big fella took it out of there. Maybe they're saying that Jones is down. Does he have complete control of this ball? No. Good call. All right, so it remains West Virginia ball, second and goal. For the backup quarterback Jones. 
who tries to run and has nowhere to go gets to the 10 yard line. You can see right away in an offense where you have so much in the hands of the quarterback in terms of decision making at the line. When you bring in a redshirt freshman backup quarterback, it changes everything you can do. Also remember, they had a center and quarterback exchange underneath the center. That's because he doesn't get enough work at it. But he gets more work in the shotgun. I keep him in the shotgun more. Almost all their offense leaves out of the shotgun. Would, I keep, there's the option. He runs some option and nothing there. Will Fork was there along with John Square on the defensive front. And West Virginia will have a field goal opportunity. Penalty markers down in the scrum of players at the 10-yard line. And it's being picked up by the officials. Well, West Virginia should have a field goal attempt coming up here as they are taking the quarterback Lewis off to the locker room. Well, Brendan Rao is going to try a field goal to even the game. The senior from Dublin, Ohio. from 26 and we are tied at three well, West Virginia gets the field goal but will they have their quarterback here's Jerry punch with the initial report Michael it's doubtful you saw a moment ago John Spiker and Dr. David Stahl the orthopedic surgeon walking off uh, with Brad Lewis in the locker room as you saw in the slow motion replay he hyperextended his neck on the hip of one of his offensive linemen and that produces an immediate spasm of the muscles along both sides of the neck and the upper back they guard him to the sideline and they're going to get some x-rays of his cervical spine and also his upper thoracic spine in the locker room. Even if the x-rays are negative, and hopefully they will be, he will have so much spasm, I would doubt he would be back at all in this football game tonight. We'll let you know on the x-rays in momentarily. Just a whiplash effect, Jerry? Exactly, Michael. Like even a small bump in an automobile accident at five or six miles an hour can cause a significant pain and spasm for a week, and he took more than a small bump, as we saw, pretty significant hyperextension on the neck. All right, Doc, thank you. A 70-yard drive that ate up five minutes. Now Derek Jones has to try to do what Brad Lewis was successfully doing. We talked about the big run by Coborn. They've been doing it all game. Lee, you mentioned it. Backside yeah. guard kicking out and getting the big guy, Warfork, right here, sealing that. Nice big hole up front. And, and this is something that Miami's going to have to make some adjustments. They rely so much on their front four. But when you have one linebacker in the middle and six defensive backs spread all over the field, either those safeties are going to have to start crashing down or they're going to have to make some adjustments with some different personnel. I want to bring up a point where I think Miami's making a mistake right now early in the game so you don't say I'm second-guessing. They're not playing enough defensive linemen because when you play a spread offense, the number one guys that get tired of those defensive linemen, they need to alternate them in there, Kirk, like Oklahoma does, like Florida State does. Get more of those defensive linemen in, keep them resting. It's a long game. Todd James kicking off. That is Willis McGahee on kickoff return from the 10. And look out, Willis McGahee. Off he goes to the 44. Pulled down by Richard Bryant, but a kick return of 34. The freshman is shaken up, though. Running back from Miami Central High School. Slow to get up. <coughs> McGay, he's the backup running back for this Miami team. He's carried it 58 times this year. That, though, his first kickoff return. And he's shaken up. Well, as they look at him, a chance to uh, tell really the story of this first quarter. Avon Coburn for West Virginia. He has been the MVP of this Mountaineer team in the first six games which haven't been successful offensively two and four and his teammates know it you see statistically 93 of the team's 110 yards I'll tell you a quick story about Coburn with the uh, nine days here because of the off week the coach Rich Rodriguez had a team meeting had some evaluation trying to get the veterans to step up their level of play and the example he used is Avon Coburn and it's like the kid who gets a nice comment from the teacher in front of the class mm -hmm. it was a little bit embarrassing for Avon but Rich said this guy is the example you all should be following. If you run in practice, every snap of practice, every day the way Avon Coburn does, we wouldn't be a 2-14. and 14. We'd be a better team. And he's proven that out here on the field tonight against number one in the nation. Well, Rich Rodriguez says he's picked his system up as well as anybody on the offensive side of the football. And this, this system is very complex, and it's new to these players. 
and Coburn's been able to pick it up, and he also is very good in pass protection, which coaches love to see. Dorsey, first down pass is incomplete. Ken Dorsey has been not as sharp as we are used to seeing him thus far in the opening quarter. That intended for Kevin Beer. Looks like right now, West Virginia trying to, Lee said it, just try to keep everything in front of them, trying to make Ken Dorsey throw the long ball, but making it throw short vertically up the field. And it's uh, right now, he's, he's, you're right, he's not very accurate with the throw. A run goes for only about a yard. So even though this West Virginia team has been very porous, allowing 245 rushing yards, they've given the Canes only 14 yards on six carries. Dorsey's been adequate so far. 3-3 three, three at the end of one on College Football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. Bienvenido a Miami. Welcome back to Miami. Second quarter, Canes three, not nears three. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Dr. Jerry Punch. Third and nine, we start quarter number two with for number one in the land. And Dorsey's throw is incomplete. Andre Johnson hand-to-hand -hand combat with Lance Frazier. Dorsey wanted a flag, nothing coming but a punch and game track. For those of you just joining us, here's how the first 15 went. Ken Dorsey is struggling right now. Another incompletion error. Now five and nine. Miami's offense only 69 yards total offense in the first quarter. Avon Coburn, remember this is the young man that got 169 yards against Notre Dame. And Lewis injured and likely out for the rest of the game. That whiplash injury. Here's the punt. Vince Frazier comes up, gets out of the way. It's tumbling towards the pylon and through the end zone for a touchback. Freddie Capshaw, another 50-plus yard punt, but another touchback. The Mountaineers will have the ball at the 20. Jerry talked to Rich Rodriguez after the first quarter. Coach, your uh, banged-up defense minus a couple starters holding its own, and the tempo offensively taking its toll. Well, we're playing hard. We're not executing it. It's sometimes we get in the red zone, but our guys are really getting some confidence right now because we're playing hard and we're making them earn some things. And if we can keep this up and keep it tight in the fourth quarter, obviously we've got a chance. Also, Lewis, how much will that impact your game plan? Well, I, all of our guys run all the plays anyway, quarterback. You know, he's a leader for us and it, it's a blow for us, but our guys are that's so much adversity right now anyway. With the guys banged up that we'll just plug old Derek in there and see what happens. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you, Jerry. A conversation after the first quarter, five yards. For Coburn, tackled by the strong safety James Lewis. There's a case where Al Marshall was a cornerback in the game with all these wide receivers came up. He was right at the line of scrimmage to make the play, and he just bounced off of Coburn. These are the kind of plays. Watch 25. Watch him come up. He's in perfect position. Boom! Make the hit, and it's a, it's a loss of a yard. Instead, he breaks the tackle. He picks up five. Quarterback draw. Jones the first down to the 33. We have five receivers and no backs. And Jones ran for the first down, but a marker's down. Back in the secondary. It might be an illegal substitution foul as the running back Coburn came off the field. No, it is a clip. That no huddle, you can almost not have it. <laughs> no. a substitution foul, but it came from way back. And the frustration of Rodriguez, the first down taken away. The things this offense could not afford to have. Everything was going very well. And now we're going to find out. He mentioned his quarterbacks take a lot of reps, and they're all fine, and they can work the system. We'll find out what kind of Flipping quarterback. Against the offense, 15-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. It's a king size flag. Back him up 15. Find out what kind of quarterback Derek Jones is because they had a lot of rhythm with Brad Lewis in the game in the first quarter. Can they continue that now with a backup quarterback? From a coaching strategy, I wouldn't do anything stupid here. I'd make sure, even if I didn't get the first down, I punted it because a big turnover by Miami, like Boom. you did at Florida State, is bing, 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 and the game's over. We see what he did, Lee. Five wide receivers, quarterback draw with yeah. the back. And it's been uh, almost no passing decisions thus far for Jones. Here comes a corner blitz. He finds the man he needs to get it to. And out to the 26 with Miguel Anderson. He gets pulled out of bounds. The true freshman with the grab. Well, that's what they call a hot read. The quarterback comes back, and he's looking at the corner. When the corner comes, the wide out and the corner both look inside the wide out and the quarterback, and they threw it real quick, Kirk. And that's what they call a hot read. In other words, the corner comes, boom, that's hit the right. guy. 
Perfect that was a really adjust. nice job. And for a young quarterback, that is great to see. He is well-schooled coming into this game to see that. Third and two, corner blitz comes again. He had the receiver wide open, but he was rolling the other way and throws an interception. Intercepted by Ed Reed. Miguel yep. Henderson was wide open over here on this side where the corner blitz came from. But it worked out just fine for the Canes. Fifth interception for Reed. In the pregame warm-up, we talked about Edward Reed. He made two great interceptions against Florida State, and here he comes. But we tried to explain to you before from a coaching strategy, don't throw the ball away unless the guy's wide open. And here, watch, that Reed is so quick. Kirk. He gets to there real quick. I love that kid, Edward Reed. One of the best safeties in all college oh. football. He's been doing it for years at Miami. He's been around going way back when Miami suffered some tough seasons. This year it means a lot to Edward Reed. <laughs> Yard line. Now just watch the tempo now. This is what we talked about. Lethargic Miami, lethargic Miami. As soon as they get a turnover, boy, they turn like piranhas. They did that against Florida State. Whoop, they come after. Well, that, that's that's a sign of a great football team. team. Absolutely. You know, you'd hate to see them start sluggish, but now they need to be able to capitalize on great opportunities right. like this. Defense gives them the ball, and plus territory, you got to score. Second and four pass coming from Dorsey. Andre Johnson, first and goal, Miami at the six. 22 on the play. Play action brought the linebackers up, and that's why it's so important to have balance with this offense. Makes the fake, linebackers come up on Portis, gives them a nice big window to throw the football in there to Andre Johnson. Andre Johnson continues to get better and better. People around the country are gonna learn to appreciate his ability. 6'3", 220 pounds, runs a 4-3. He will be a big time receiver in college football into next level. And he almost had a touchdown there, but couldn't hang on. Locked in man coverage with Richard Bryant. Tight man coverage here. Little push off. Little push off never hurt anybody. A little nudge. Just a little. It kind of gives you an idea of his strength. You know, he, Lee, you mentioned earlier the speed of this team. Philip Buchanan has great speed when it comes to track season. Andre Johnson has great speed as well. He's right there with Philip Buchanan. David Williams joins Saki. Two tight ends in. Running that way is Portis, and he is stood up by the West Virginia defense. You know, the one thing Phil Elmation's defense has done this year is in these sudden change situations where the Mountaineer defense has to stop at a 30, 35 yard short field. They've gotten the job done better in those situations than the long drops. And they're showing a little bit of that here tonight. Remember, the key defensive strategy is to stop the Miami run, which they're doing a halfway decent job. If Miami had the option play, they would score 500 points against these guys because everybody is in the middle playing the run. And you bounce it to the outside. Oh, yeah. Three receivers. Dorsey's throw to Shockey. They give it to him. Yes, touchdown. Fourth touchdown of the year for the junior from Ada, Oklahoma. Todd Seavers on to add the extra point. Miami takes advantage of the turnover and makes it 10 3. In a great year nationally for tight ends, few are as good as Shockey. On this connection with Dorsey, the Canes take a seven point lead. Celebration there in Miami. A little tape job for the tight end Shockey, who caught the six yard touchdown. Miami goes to short field after the INT. There's the man who made the pick, Ed Reed. Now, five on this impressive 2001 season as he moves up the all time charts, as you see, second in Miami history in interceptions. Benny Blades, the all time career leader, is only one away. Blades picked 19. 
rain beginning to come down steadier and heavier here at the Orange Bowl. And Terry feels it going backwards. He's off to a slow start, but hits the hole quick. And watch out. He's got great straight line speed. And Terry's taken out. He lost the ball. Did Miami get it in time? No, it went out of bounds. So West Virginia will get the ball eight yards farther ahead. The kicker, Todd Seavers, he didn't just push him out. <laughs> he got the ball out. Kickers, holders, everybody's athletic for this football team. We <laughs> watch him come in, puts the hand right on the ball, knocks it out. Yeah, Seavers. I mean, don't forget their punter, Capshaw. That's he what had I said. that nice little uh, the whole fake thing. field goal type fake. situation. Call it a fake. Against, against your Seminole. Larry Coker told his wife it was a fake. She thought he was a brilliant coach. Comes back to the spot of the fumble. Offense can't advance it from the 40. They're going to do a lot of running with Coburn out of the gun here. Gets it to the 44. Let's quickly get you back to that Miami touchdown by Shockey. 88, Jeremy Shockey's was a high school wideout, and that's why he went to junior college. Instead of going to Fresno State, he told me he always wanted to play tight end, and Miami was his choice after a year of junior college. I think he's the best in the nation. Yeah, he's the best out there. Great combination running or catching the ball yeah. and block is good. He's learned to be fit more physical. Friendly give on the touchdown. Very, very close. Second and six. Quarterback draw Jones. Dancing. Getting out to the 49 yard line. DJ Williams made the tackle. Ed Reed in the defense back on the field after they came up with an INT. Yeah, you're going to find Ed Reed sitting right in here. And in the inside, Michael Page, number 26, he's going to come out. This is part of being a young quarterback. And we're seeing that right now with Derek Jones. If he throws it now, he's able to squeeze it in there. He throws it late, allows Edward Reed to come over. Edward Reed is the emotional leader of this football team. All the players look, look to him. Third and one and a half straight forward goes Jones. And he has the first down. You know, when I look at this football team, it looks like to me that Derek Jones, the redshirt freshman, is better suited physically than this offense than the starter Brad Lewis was. He's quicker and they could do more things with him like Woody Danzler instead of just throw the football. He and Rasheed like Marshall, him. who got hurt early in the year, I mean, the athletic ability because of a guy like Sean King and Woodrow Danzler, that's what Jones would yeah. bring to the huddle. Now, Lewis did a good job of running the offense here in the first yeah. quarter. Yeah, that's why I feel bad for the kid. From midfield, the first down carry. Cell Smith gets about a yard. You can see those Miami DBs are just charging towards the line now almost every snap. That's exactly what Rich Rodriguez wants because it's a matter of time. The people upstairs, the coaches for West Virginia are seeing the same thing you're seeing, Mike, and that's what they want. They want to get the defensive backs to lock in on Coburn, and then they're going to try to throw the football off of that by getting those DBs locked down. And the play selection, 21 runs and seven passes. 21 runs for 104 yards. It's right at five to carry, 4.97. Or thereabouts. Blitz coming. Jones got away from Fitzgerald and put it up for grabs. Fortunately, it was uncatchable. Marquise Fitzgerald brought the heat. It was in the general vicinity of Braxton. And the reason why West Virginia is still in this ball game is the fact that they have 104 yards rushing against Miami. And that is a lot of yards. Remember, Florida State got 214 against them last time they played. You can see there the quarterback, the job. He will look over to Rich Rodriguez, make sure he gets to play. Very interesting, very complex scheme for, for a quarterback to deal with. Throwing down, put it up for grabs. Grabbed by Miami. And hold on. James Lewis, touchdown, Pete. 74 yards.
Receivers on for the extra point. 17-3. James Lewis, the senior. Second pick for score of the season. Number one leads by 17 ESPN 2's Thursday Night College Football is brought to you by Original Coors. Nothing beats an original. Some of the scenes, the luxury scenes in Miami. Luxurious stretch for the Canes defense there. They lead 17-3. They forced two turnovers in the last 244. One led to a score, and the last one became a score. James Lewis taking it back for the touchdown. The interception returned 74 yards, and Derek Jones struggling here and really made a horrible decision, to be honest. Sugar-coated only so much. <laughs> See his kick. Returned by Michael Page. Brought down to the 20. Marker down as well. The heavy hit came from Carl Walker. Marker down back at the 14-yard line. And Jack Kramer's going to make a call here for us. Illegal block below the waist on the return team. Half the distance to the goal line. We'll take First us back down. to about the seven. Take us back to the touchdowns here, guys. Again, this is a part of the, the learning curve of being a young quarterback. The timing. He's late on his throws because he's not trusting his eyes and what he's seeing. You can see there's an opening there by throwing it late. It allows Lewis to come over and make the interception. What I love is it's a race to the end zone. When Miami makes an interception, you have a convoy taking yourself into the end zone. Number 17 right there, D.J. Williams. This is the second time he's done this. As the scrape out comes in a rollout, the reason why the quarterback throws that interception is the pressure of that D.J. Williams. It's the second time he's done that. Two interceptions have come from those things. Like we said earlier, Coach, this is where great teams defensively take over a football game. Twice, two big turnovers. Coburn loses a couple. Vince Wolfork made the play. Red shirt freshman, and that's a name to store away. The Miami folks think in the long line of those kind of guys, he could be the next guy. You know, if he can contain his weight, that's the big issue with Wolfork. If he's able to, he came in at 380. They've worked him down to, he'll tell you 325. Coach will say 335, maybe. On a good day, it's a big guy up front. You're right, if he can hold that weight down, he's going to be phenomenal. Over in the eighth, third, and about 10 coming up. And here's Doc. Guys, we're from the Mountaineer locker room. Head trainer Dave Kearns tells me that Brad Lewis's x-rays are negative. That is good news. No, nothing broken in the cervical or thoracic spine. And the not-so-good news, though, as we expected, a lot of spasm in the neck and upper shoulders. He is in the locker room being iced down. Doubtful we will see him back at all tonight. Okay, Jerry. And a shame, too, because he yeah. was playing uh, very good in the early going in executing the game plan. Probably the first time since he's had to take over this offense. He executed it the way Rich Rodriguez wants with the tempo. I mean, he was getting the team up to the line of scrimmage, calling the right plays, making great decisions. You're right, it's a shame to see him go down like that. He was executing the option better than any time this year, and that way to really put the pressure on the defense. When you can play the option play on offense, you can play less man for man in the secondary because you don't get enough support. Third and eight. Tough spot to throw here for the red shirt freshman, Buddy Will. That's John Square leading the charge again. That's an interesting call, Mike. John Square is third on the list. That's what I like. Miami is now starting to alternate those defensive linemen, like I mentioned at the beginning, because they get tired. The more you play against the spread offense, the more defensive linemen you must play. And this is where Miami usually makes a big special teams play as well. James gets the kick away, and it's a beauty. Oh. Fabulous, necessary kick. Buchanan just lets it go. Oh, he's upset with himself all the way back to the 24-yard line. A much-needed, fabulous 71-yard punt for the sophomore Todd James, his career best. Time for our ESPN.com Thursday Night Football poll. Who is the Heisman frontrunner? Is it David Carr, Eric Crouch, sent for the showdown with Oklahoma? 
Woody Dantzler, a Clemson team that hit a couple of roadblocks. The man you're seeing under center for the number one team in the land tonight, or Deshaun Foster, who has just been a running machine. Don't forget Joey Harrington, too, at Oregon, even though they lost. Harrington had another fabulous game last week. First and ten for Dorsey. Long ball for Andre Johnson is intercepted. Taken away by Richard Bryant. Out of bounds at the 49. So Dorsey throws his fourth interception on the season. The timing of that promo could not have been any worse. <laughs> <laughs> for Ken Dorsey. For Ken Dorsey. Yeah. For the internet vote. <laughs> but for Richard Bryant, it couldn't have come at a better time. He uses his body here. This is a throw. You're relying on the big receiver to go up and make the play. Richard Bryant is a pretty good size, but he used his body to shield Johnson and didn't allow him to get over there to make the play. And that's just being a phenomenal athlete once he shielded Johnson, finding the ball over his shoulder like that. Fourth interception, as you see, for Dorsey. Fourth for Bryant as well. Best field position of the night for West Virginia. Williams keeping on the option, backs it up a yard. This is a spread offense, which is useful because you can run the ball successfully, as we've seen. But they've only thrown nine passes tonight, and you have the confidence that they have no, or the feeling they have no confidence in throwing the ball right now. Not with that quarterback, but also you got to give defensive coordinator Randy Shannon a lot of a lot of credit. The adjustment on the sideline for Miami was to make the quarterback run the ball on the option and forget the pitch. And that was a nice adjustment by Randy Shannon, defensive coordinator. That and defense alignment starting to win the battle up front. Back in the 11, Colburn gets a yard, pulled down by Chris Campbell, the strong side linebacker out of Texas. Well, a reminder, this is a fabulous weekend right here on ESPN2. How about this for a six Eastern game? Lou Holtz in South Carolina who visited Rocky Top to take on the Volunteers. Casey Clawson in Tennessee ready for one of those uh, one loss SEC East battles. You have Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee. Six Eastern on ESPN2 on Saturday. Third and nine needing to get to the Canes 41. Four receivers, five in the pattern. And the throw is complete for much more than a first down. Seth Abraham takes it out to the 26-yard line. Mike Rumpf made the tackle, the senior's third catch of the year. This is about matchups and finding the right matchup, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and trying to use a crossing route. Anytime you have some, some uh, defensive backs and linebackers trying to keep clear of an area and be responsible for an area, you try to cross and find the hole, and there Abraham did. In the 34. <laughs> Nowhere to go for Cassell Smith in the game, giving Coburn a spell. Coaches told us we're going to see more of Smith here in the game. Got a couple of carries against Notre Dame, the game in South Bend. But Cooper Rigo could not make the trip. Smith has continued to emerge as the last few years have gone on, a few weeks of the season, I should say, and finds himself in the lineup tonight. Second and ten. Jones on the run. Hit a man. Missed, put the ball on the ground, but he was down. Boy, I tell you what, this Jones impresses me with its acceleration and the speed. Kirk, you said he was a pretty good athlete in high school. Watch this acceleration. It's the old favorite play where they pull a guard around, but watch this right here. Now, this is against Miami. He goes right past two of those guys. I like the way Derek Jones is running. Too bad he has to throw. If he didn't have to throw a lot of passes, he's all right throw. He's just late with his throws. Well, he's young. He's young, and he has to throw against one of the best defensive secondaries in the nation. Tough to do. Quarterback sneak there for Jones. Picks up the first down at the 25. But I also like the kind of passes they're calling for him. Now, he's, he's running the back out of the backfield, like you said. He isolated. He run a nice little curl route. Run the option. Run a pass. Those are the kind of passes when he gets in trouble is when he rolls out and tries to throw too many fancy passes. Tight end Tory Johnson is checked in. So we've got three receivers, a tight end, and the running back. As the rain picks up, the ball comes out. And Miami's got it. Ned Reed's ready to run with it. And he's down at the 20. Flag is down as well. Back where the ball was snapped. That's against Miami. 
perhaps a post possession foul though. And a little indication from the official. I think it was the big fella Will Fork. <laughs> taking, <laughs> taking care of some business. What did he do? Sit on a guy or what? Uh, I think he had I think he had a, a few words there for Tim Brown and he, he gave him a shot there. That's the third turnover in nine and a half minutes. And go back on the back on the return. It was on the full return, turn, so stepped off from the spot. Here's the turnover. Get the football, the ball. Ball stings around. And initially, Ed Reed wants to be able to pick it up and go. He's taking him a touchdown. You know, you know, Miami leads the nation in turnover margin per game. 2.2 turnovers plus per game. That's a big advantage. It's plus 11 coming in. It's plus two right now for the night. After the fourth turnover of the game, Mark Clinton Portis takes 10 right at the first and 10 line. That was an interesting little maneuver. I haven't seen it twice to this today. They have an unbalanced line. Now, you'll notice there's three big linemen on one side with the tight end and an end over. And it confused the West Virginia defense, and that's why they ran through it. That's why that play was successful. A nice little call there of an unbalanced line. They picked up the first down. Miami leading by 14. Richie Portis. Across the 30 into the 31 yard line. Whenever you feel the momentum switch, where most often you can sense it is in the, in the battle up front. West Virginia in the first quarter feeling pretty, pretty good about themselves on both sides, and they were playing hard and winning that battle. Now, since the turnovers, you can see the will now of West Virginia beginning to go down, and Miami as a team on a mission this year is starting to go back up. Time to run Portis to the right. Got a block from Najee Davenport. And he's met by Richard Bryant. At the 34. Now for the first down. And uh, Bryant, a uh, Floridian, trying to stoke his team here and keep them in the game. Kind of sensing a little bit of what you were talking about. Well, Paul, he's from Pahokee, and that's, that's pretty good football country. And remember one thing about that kid. He just came up with a big interception, and now he comes up with a good hit. And that's the sign of a good corner. He's trying to help him get this team fired up. Yeah. yeah. Well, West Virginia has long come down to Florida and recruited and done a nice job of getting players. And this is a personal pride game for so many of them. Dorsey play pass. Looking for the home run. Andre Johnson's there. What he couldn't get. Their biorhythms are not syncing up tonight. They are just a little bit off all five tosses. If one on one on the outside, that's something that they're, they've been looking for, and they've been there. You can see Stinson turns Frazier completely around. He's wide open. If the ball's on the money, he's in the end zone. Ken Dorsey, up to this point, has not been able to find his rhythm. Therefore, he can't find these receivers downfield that are wide open. Second down, Dorsey's toss to Shockey, the tight end. It does about six, third and four ahead. Angel Estrada, former walk-on, starting at Rover, who joined uh, the true freshman on the tackle. And the die will come out, stay in. What do you want me to do? <laughs> For a defense that's so banged up, they've been banged up all year. You've got to be pretty happy with the effort that these guys are giving tonight. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. They've only allowed 10 points as a defense. One Miami defensive score. Here comes the pressure. Got it away. And a deflection caught by Kevin Beard. First down. James Davis almost got in there to get Ken Dorsey. West Virginia almost had an interception. Miami has a first down. This was the closest I've seen Dorsey get sacked this year. Right there. Yep. Nice corner blitz in there, but when things are going well for you, things are going well for you. <laughs> the number one team in the nation does not need a tip reception <laughs> on third down. <laughs> no. Angel Estrada got a hand on it. Well, that was not one of the prettiest completions. Dorsey just above 50% completions tonight. Najee Davenport out of the backfield. Gets it out to the 36. Second and one coming up for Miami. 
So Clark takes us inside the final 90 seconds. And the big games that they're going to end up playing down the road against some of the uh, heavyweights in this conference. Najee Davenport will become a huge factor in throwing the football out of the backfield, being a great athlete, something that uh, Miami has a big advantage over most teams in the country. Tune to the 100s and you'll find a huge selection of the latest hit movies on your television service. It's always easy on Blockbuster Ticket, only on DirecTV. Steven Seagal is tough on crime, but now he's taking on his fellow officers. Life attack was hit by cops. Watch your back. Exit Wounds. Also starring DMX. I keep my promises. Playing this month on Blockbuster Ticket, only on DirecTV. Okay, what'd I miss? Oh, you wouldn't believe. The, the one guy shot this other guy crazy, what's his name? That, that, that doesn't make any sense. What's yes, his name? Yes, I just watched it. You know, if you had a direct TV receiver with TiVo, you could automatically record The Sopranos and watch it when you're both home. That's the dead guy. What's he doing driving a truck? <laughs> automatically record your favorite shows all season long. Now TV fits into your life, not the other way around. TiVo, TV and late night errands your way. Silk shirt, a little South Beach action on a Thursday night. I saw Lee down there last night dancing around. Yeah. Good time. Forget about it. Forget about it. 7:30, pajamas, White, white socks. Game bed. night. No. Second and one. Before the game. After the Miami timeout, Dorsey lost the ball. It's on the ground, and I think the Canes got it back. They did. It will be third down. Again, the rain uh, started probably late first quarter and has continued on and uh, been at a decent pace here throughout and Dorsey drying his hands as you watch Rich Rodriguez Kirk you made a good point during the uh, last break these fans have not moved it, the rain is refreshing it's been so hot and humid bring it that thank goodness <laughs> it has rained for every Miami home game this year you know that I didn't it did but I forgot it's on my descent how about Pittsburgh Oh, that ball's out. It's free. And the Mountaineers have it. This could go. Angel Estrada. Dorsey knocked it out of his hands. And it's picked up by Richard Bryant. And there's a marker down. Very that, sloppy. That was a little bit of everything on that call, Mike. Yes. And more to come, too. Let's see who the flag is on. Holding against the offense. Penalties is behind. Miami, so West Virginia gets the ball back, keeps Miami off the scoreboard. Oh, big hit. Big, big hit. hit. Now, this is an opportunity. Yeah. This is this is a huge opportunity for West Virginia. I mean, you have a chance to possibly go down 24-3 or maybe the very least, maybe 20 to 3. Get a big defensive stop. You get the ball back plus territory you have to come away with some points here or you better make sure that Miami doesn't come away with some don't throw an interception. by throwing an interception against one of the best secondaries in all of college football the walk on from the Bronx Estrada came up with the ball then lost it but for the second time tonight Bryant secures a turnover for the Mountaineers first and 10 Jones to the vacated spot on the move to the 26 yard line time out here stop clock for the first down here Chris Fowler for a look at college game day halftime. Chris. Yeah, Mike, it's the Keystone Light Report, some of the dirty little secrets of Miami's big uglies on hidden video. Kalamazoo makes a cameo and a report from Lincoln on the battle of the Big Red. Rodney and Michael join me as you lean quick for the stage drive. Watch out for those leaks in the press box there. Uh, you, you got actually one right off to our left, Chris. <laughs> Timeout being called by Coburn down on the field as the first down run was stopped. 
Orange Bowl has plenty of character. 74 year old facility. Great old building. I mean, you, you can just see the plays that have happened down on this field. It, the national championships in 83, 87, 89, and 91. My favorite, I was sitting down about the 20 yard line with Doug Flutie through the Hail Mary right over there where it says Miami. You were in right the building? Today? I was in the building. 1984? 1984, and I was sitting right down about the 20 yard line, and he hit it right where the M is in Miami in the end zone. Right, wait, let me show you. Right there is where Doug Flutie. Gerard Phelan. Right there. For the touchdown. Fabulous game 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. Five Super Bowls this building has hosted. 11 championship games in terms of the title being right. decided in college football here. Of course, that Miami streak and all these players over the years. Miami great. Do you have a favorite memory? The Orange Bowl here? I know what it is. It, it's the, it's the, uh, the hook and ladder play in the San Diego Miami playoff game. My, yeah, I know your mine was right here. Jeremy Shockey against Florida State oh, last year to uh, take down the Knowles. Remember the Nebraska championship, the field goal, and then we had to come back out and kick the field goal again in the game against Florida State. Oh, oh he's going to throw! A man is open! Oh. Complete for Braxton. That would have been a huge momentum play. And the reason why they call that play is Kirk and you were talking about how the defensive backs were coming up so fast. And I think one of you guys said, you know, the, the coaches up in the press box are going to see that. Exactly That's right. That's what they did, didn't they? That's exactly right. A little option pitch. You don't think everything. Look at Ed Reed. Ed Reed's coming up. Everybody's at the line of scrimmage. Just put a little oh, bit more air under it. It's a touchdown. They might have been watching the monitor and listening to you guys and told them to run that option play. Third and 13. Want to stay in field goal range as well. Jones on the move. Look out. Incomplete. Intended for Michael Page. Seven seconds left. From here, it's a 46-yard field goal. And Rao's career long is 43. College game day. Keystone Light halftime report is coming up with Chris and company. Mike Gottfried, Rod Gilmore back in the studio. Rich Rodriguez going to take a timeout as he does. We'll step out, see if they go for the field goal or go for a touchdown. Being in this sport means that you, like, are helping the other team. In T-ball, my, my, the other coaches are helping you. When the other person shit throws the ball to you, you should pass it to them. It's like if someone fell down, I think the right choice to be is help them up. And they're supposed to be a good sport. Discovery, transformation, achievement. The University of Miami, go and change the world. Game for West Virginia. Their game plan seems to be somewhat effective, but Brad Lewis has not been uh, out there because of injury, and so the West Virginia hopes have been dashed by turnovers and some mistakes. I wouldn't try to field goal. It's too dangerous to slip. I'd try to throw in the end zone. What do you think? You take a shot down the end zone, or you try to find a one-on-one -on -one matchup because Jones has a chance to throw if they can give him a little time. Throw it in the end zone, young man. Throw it. Gotta get rid of it. Yeah. This one's the good one to put up for grabs. See if you get a pass in the uh -oh. Maybe not. Ed Reed, the interception, and on the run. Looking for blockers. Got a hold. Flag is down. And Reed pitched it back. Oh, the big guy. On the move is Santonio Thomas, who throws it out of bounds. Flag down. Ball out of bounds. Player hurt down by the goal line for Miami and halftime as well. Al Marshall, the freshman, is shaken up back where the uh, pass ended up. You won't believe this, but just before the games, I was watching ESPN Classic, and it had the Cal Ladro. Did you see it, remember? Yeah. It was like bing, 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 bing. That looks what it was like then. Flag ends the half at the break. Miami 17, West Virginia 3. You know, Chris, solid, but not overly impressive for the Canes in the first 20 minutes here tonight. Not really, Mike. 
time for the third quarter at the Orange Bowl. And uh, <laughs> we've, got, we've got issues. We got heavy, heavy, serious rain. <laughs> Está lloviendo in Miami right now. Undeterred some of these Canes fans here for the third quarter. Canes 17, West Virginia 3. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Jerry Punch getting the uh, Trooper Award for being down there in this heavy rain. Miami won the toss, so they defer the option to the second half, and they will accept the kickoff. You guys don't see any lightning, do you? No, oh, that's what I think they're trying to get the clock. I still got a national rental car, and I don't want it to hit again. <laughs> yeah. Is that Blacksburg? Blacksburg. We hope to be talking to their head coach, Frank Beamer, later on in this third quarter. Really? Yes. Well, well Frank uh, got his hands full this weekend. It's a good Syracuse team. Right? Syracuse beat Auburn that second half. They look well, Their sensation. defense has been playing well all year. Yeah. Now R.J. Anderson coming yeah. off a great game last week. Onside kick attempt is recovered by Miami. Well, Miami wasn't fooled. <laughs> by West Virginia's thought. The recovery comes from Daryl McClover. Nice job by Daryl, and let's check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. How you doing, pal? Well, guys, I don't think the heavy stuff will be here for quite some time. You know, it's, uh, I just saw two guys roll by me on the way back to the locker room. Halftime locker room for uh, West Virginia. I'm talking to my coach Rodriguez, saying that he's uh, looking for Derek Jones. Maybe do a little Woodrow Dantzler imitation. Look for him to maybe tuck in and run if the receivers aren't open. Tempo is going to be key. So if we can get the ball snapped quickly, we're not getting as nearly as much pass work. Okay, Doc, we'll watch that when the Mountaineers get back out on the field. The first down run for Clinton Portis took it down to the 35-yard line. Miami was actually outgained in the first half by West Virginia. But Larry Coker's team was the beneficiary of four turnovers. It'll be second in about a half yard. Miami, the number one team in the nation. Portis probing first down, but a marker down that is likely holding either on Hibla or Davenport. The guard or fullback. And he'll push it back 10 yards. Let's check our ESPN2 game track for those of you who are just joining us. Six turnovers in the game. One immediately a Miami touchdown. The other one led to a short drive. Ken Dorsey has struggled tonight finding his rhythm and finding open receivers, although they're getting his touchdown pass to the big tight end Jeremy Shockey. Coburn played very, very well at the beginning, but then Miami started to set their defense to stop him, and they, uh, he hasn't done very well since then. But I tell you what, he was very impressive, impressive at the beginning of the game. Brad Lewis was out there. Coburn is yes. running the football. Running, well. running some option play. Yeah. Those of you tuning in late, the Mountaineer quarterback injured in the first quarter, a whiplash injury. And his, uh, his departure from the lineup, West Virginia's offense stumbled a little bit. Andre Johnson's catch takes it down to the 40. We'll have third and five coming up. On a few plays here, let's uh, take a peek back at the halftime stats. You see West Virginia, 33 more yards. But the four turnovers, it turned into 14 Miami points, and there's a difference in the game. That's right. And also, there's not one factor in there, return yardage. Miami has been sensational on punt and kickoff returns. They've got a lot of hidden yardage in that return yardage. Always find a way to do that. Boy, don't they? They're very talented. Third and six for the Canes in this driving rainstorm. Blitz is coming. Deflected and nearly intercepted. Richard Bryant is having a fabulous game. He's trying to hurdle that over Bryant and the defense. Fourth down. Go back to when the game started to shift with the momentum. The crowd started to get into the game. Miami started to get a little playing a little bit more in a dominating fashion. Richard Bryant was the guy that was trying to stop him and trying to make sure the defense was playing with him. A timeout is called by West Virginia. Hmm. Step out. Saturn is working to keep our economy strong in jobs, in commerce, and in spirit.
As part of that effort, we're providing interest-free financing on every new coupe, sedan, and wagon we make. Come visit your Saturn retailer and keep America rolling. There's a better way to soothe your skin after shaving. New Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm has advanced moisturizers and vitamins to soothe and improve your skin. Nivea Aftershave Balm, more evolved skin care. There's nothing more beautiful than a baby's face, lit by the amazing GE Reveal Bulb. Reveal filters out yellow, leaving only clean, pure light. GE Reveal, there's nothing more beautiful than clean, pure light. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. Sesta fun. Highlight. Right over from the fronton, and I hope those are t shirts or something. Fourth down, punting situation. West Virginia didn't have enough players on the field. Capshaw's kick will be downed at the 17 yard line. Well, Ed Reed and the Miami defense come back on the field after the 25 yard punt. We, fetch, we featured Edward Reed in the beginning of the show because he had two of those great turnovers against Florida State and a block punt. Here he continues. There's an interception. Beautifully done. Now, watch him. He comes up, gets the fumble. He's disappointed here because he wanted to pick it up and score. And then he gets this other. Boom. He's fighting for that one. He's fighting. <laughs> he got one in almost in the exact same spot against Florida State as we showed the pregame show. He's a tremendous football player. And if you look at Edward Reed, you look at uh, Roy Williams. The yep. great safeties in the game. Mike Doss, Ohio State, too. Run by Avon Coburn out to the 22. Coburn very close now to 100 yards on the night. And he's got it on the button. The Hurricanes have not given up a 100 yard rusher yet this year. Lee Suggs was the last opponent to go over 100 against Miami. The Virginia Tech running back is out for the season now. The week one knee injury. Second and five to Derek Jones, the redshirt freshman quarterback from Ohio. Got a run here out of the gun, yeah. won't get anywhere. William Joseph in on the tackle as this torrential downpour continues. It's rained in Miami for every single game at home. Yeah, I every mean, one. I would say Pittsburgh, even when they played on the road at Pittsburgh, it was oh. rain. So it's like they, they've had to deal with rain all year. Is that what you were saying before? Yeah, yeah. When I try to correct you? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you me. So I just let it slide. That's a tough time spreading all those defensive backs from the balls on their hands. It's much tougher to do. This is third and six. Jones in trouble and goes down. Jamal Green will get credit. For the tackle, it's almost no gain. Punt. You know how tough it is to complete a pass when a, a defense is rushing four, just four, allowing them to use seven in the coverage, as opposed to everybody else in the country usually rushes five, sometimes six on the blitz. Miami doesn't do that. Very quick release on the punt by James. On the bounce, taken by Philip Buchan, who fell down. We'll go down right there at the 43. The loyal and dedicated fighting the rain to watch number one. These are quarter carrots and these are half. They're beautiful. What kind of cut is that? This is a round cut. If you look hard, I'm sure you can see them. They're fantastic.
with a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. These are eight carats, and these are ten carats. Make it a Bud Light. Saturn is working to keep our economy strong. In jobs, in commerce, and in spirit. As part of that effort, we're providing interest-free financing on every new coupe, sedan, and wagon we make. Come visit your Saturn retailer and keep America rolling. At the Home Depot, we're driving down the cost of home improvement. With new lower prices like this 10-foot closet organizer from Mills Pride, it was $49, now it's just $34.95. It makes even small spaces work harder. Just look for the hammer symbol. It means we've got lower prices nailed. College football Saturday. Tied for most wins with the Bear, Joe Paterno aims for the record books against Ohio State. Ohio State, Penn State, noon Saturday on ESPN. ESPN 2's Thursday Night College Football is brought to you by Saturn. Now with two distinctly different car lines, the L-Series and the S-Series. And by Peregrine Systems, software solutions for frictionless business. He gets some downpours in this part of the country, as uh, anyone who's been down here often well knows we had downpour like this yesterday. Same is true here tonight as a cold front comes through. <laughs> They're not embarrassed to watch their team. First down run for Portis is uh, fighting to get back to the line of scrimmage and will gain just a yard. But Portis, despite the poor defensive effort on the ground this year from West Virginia, hasn't been able to break off anything big. Under 15 yards so far tonight. And one of the reasons why he hasn't is the offensive line doesn't get a good traction when, the, when it's wet like this, Mike. The offensive cut line comes off and they kind of slip down. If it's a quick field, then you see that offensive line exploding and taking those guys back. By center, Brett Romberg. There's Portis fighting for yards up the middle. To the 48. Third and five coming up. Number 66, Brett Romberg is one of the leaders in the football team. He's Ken Dorsey's roommate, and I asked Dorsey about him. He said he sings and plays a guitar, guitar in the rock band. Do you know guys know that? Yeah. Windsor, no. Ontario. They got two offensive linemen, one from Toronto and one from Windsor. That's recruiting all over the world. With Windsor right across the bridge from downtown yeah, Detroit. Right. Actually south of downtown Detroit. Across the Ambassador Bridge. Third and five. Try to get the first down on the ground, not getting there. Grant Wiley, the sophomore from Pennsylvania, makes the play, and the fans are uh, booing a little bit. They're out here in the rain. Their team's leading 17-3. They'd like to see more offense. The Mountaineers are shutting them down. One of the ways to open up the running lanes is to throw the football downfield and try to take advantage of some matchups. They've had receivers open. Ken Dorsey is unfortunately for him, but he's missing them. Having those guys downfield wide open. Well, a marker comes down. You saw two or three West Virginia players charge over. They say that they saw the movement from Miami, but it's not to get some Mountaineers in a first down. Prior to the snap, offside, oh, defense. Right. One of the foul. things I used to do as a coach, anytime it was penalty. fourth down first and down. five or less, I always made my defensive lineman line up a yard deeper away from the line of scrimmage so that wouldn't happen and tell them, look, let them punt the ball. Don't try to block it on fourth and less than five, and that's exactly what they did. And they put such an effort on no special teams this yeah. year. See, and there's no excuse for that guy coming across there. What are you going to do? You, you back him up off the line. That's one thing, I've coaching point that I made that I don't think it's good. No reason for that. No. Miami gets it back. You don't want to give these guys second chances, but nothing there for Portis. Jason Davis from Fort Lauderdale north on 95 made the play and Zach punch that offensive line struggling to get going right now. 
Michael, they are, but uh, you talk about diversity on this football team. How about the United Nations of college football? Take a look at the offensive line. The center you mentioned, Romberg, is from Canada, from Windsor, Ontario. Left guard, Haji Razuli, born in Iran. Gonzalez, uh, parents are Cuban. Bibla is from Poland. And the one they have trouble with the speech problem with understanding is uh, McKinney. He's from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Second and ten for Dorsey and the Canes. Here's the throw. And complete. Much more for Andre Johnson to the 18-yard line. 27 yards and a first down for Ken Dorsey. And a West Virginia player is injured, and it is Richard Bryant, who's been their star thus far tonight defensively. If West Virginia is going to commit to seven, eight men up close to the line of scrimmage, you have to try to throw the football over them. Here he's wide open, and you mentioned how the, the offensive linemen have a tough time drive blocking with these wet conditions. Defensive backs also have a tough time reacting to a wide receiver who knows where he's going on his cut, and the defensive backs have to react, and a lot of times they're very tentative with their footing. They have a chance to throw the football. And that time, number 19, Lance Fraser gave Johnson too much room. Remember, he's the young man we went from uh, Dade County to Broward all the way up to Orlando, giving him that much space, and they cut in front of him. That's a young sophomore from Delray Beach, Florida, that they're driving deep and coming underneath him. Well, they continue to look at uh, Richard Bryant, Frazier's starting mate on the opposite corner, and they're looking at his leg. And it appears to be in some pain. A lot one, of it. Like that's one one position. West Virginia can't afford to, uh, to lose anybody. Looks like he might be cramping down there. Mm -hmm. Lewis Daniels, uh, player who started for them, is also out. Missing tonight's game, didn't make the trip. And as mentioned earlier, their top tackler in the secondary, free safety Rick Sherrard from Charleston, is out because of injury as well. Well, we talked about this uh, Miami offensive line that has protected Ken Dorsey so well. No sacks in a regular season game for over a year. We asked Ken about the men who protect the Heisman candidate. <laughs> I don't think so. You know, they, they haven't needed to wash my jersey that much. So, you know, the offensive line has played great. They, they're they ki the key to this team. Uh, we couldn't do as much as we're doing right now with the, without the success we've had on the offensive line. So, um, you know, with, without them, we, we'd be uh, in a lot tougher shape right now. You go back to October 21st wow. of last year, the last time they did allow a regular season sack, the only team in the country to not allow one this year. Alex Brown did get Dorsey in the Sugar Bowl, lone sack allowed since last October. And, and they're the pranksters of the whole team. Uh, they're, they're the guys that, that keep the locker room loose. Everybody on both sides of the ball talks about that when you talk to these players. Brian comes off, as you guys mentioned, look like cramping, and Dorsey. He's a little different wrinkle from the West Virginia defense, so takes time out. 8-17, about halfway through here. Third quarter, Miami looking for more. Tired of struggling with hot wax and having to shave every single day? Then stop! Introducing Apple Stop and Spray, the easiest way to hair removal ever. Just spray and wipe away. Apple Stop and Spray is a natural vitamin E and citrus lotion that instantly dissolves the entire hair as it nourishes your skin. Just spray Apple Stop and Spray, then wipe the hair away. Other hair removers are sticky and messy and they hurt, but Apple Stop and Spray is quick, easy, and pain free. You'll also get a lifetime supply of Apple Stop Roll On Free. Remove unwanted hair on your upper lip, chin, and neck. That's right, a lifetime supply free. Plus, you'll get this 100% cotton terry robe, an $80 value free. If you're not completely satisfied, return it, but keep the robe as our gift to you. Apple Stop and Spray, the king size, the travel size, plus Apple Stop Roll-On, and the free robe, all for only $29.95. And ask about our free instructional video. Call 1-800-613-4488 to order Apple Stop and Spray with your free lifetime supply of Apple Stop Roll-On and free terry robe. in baseball. Each year old, come on down. See who the players voted for. Oh, the Players' Choice Awards. 6 p.m. Eastern, Sunday, only on ESPN. 
Back at the Orange Bowl on College Football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. Miami 17, West Virginia 3. Now the dreams are of Rose Bowl and national title and Heisman trophies, but the task at hand is uh, play a little bit better here in the second half against West Virginia. Offense has only put up one touchdown here tonight. Dorsey play action. Lofting it for Shockey the tight end. Couldn't get to it. Good coverage from Brian King. He battled a knee injury in practice this week. But he had to come in because of the cramping for Richard Bryant. During the timeout, Jerry reported cramps in both legs. But number two is back on the field in the blue and gold of the Mountaineers. You just talked about the offense line. Heard Ken Dorsey talk about how he, a lot of times his jersey's pretty clean. I, I think West Virginia tonight has done as good a job as anybody that they've faced in getting pressure. They're not always getting sacks, but they're making him get rid of the football much sooner than he'd like to. Pushing Portis runs right side. Davenport the block. Portis keeps going through a couple of tackles. And the first down at the eight. First and goal on the run by 28. The offensive coordinator Rob Chudzinski says we have to be able to run into eight and nine man fronts at times. It's a matter of we're going to be outnumbered, but we have to rely on backs breaking tackles. There, one, two, three. That's a great back making a play there because West Virginia had nine guys at the line of scrimmage and Portis still found enough room to get first down. 61 yards now for Portis. Ethnic Sands is the lone receiver. A couple of tight ends, a little power football look. As Portis runs right to the four-yard line. Arm tackled by Brian King. I'll never forget two years ago we were at the Miami Virginia Tech game when Virginia Tech made the whole Miami team quit quarterbacks and backs and everything else and I never forget this kid was a freshman Clint Portis and he ran hard ran I ran over for the first time in my life and shook a kid's hand after the game and said let me tell you something young man you could play for me any day Clinton Portis two years ago at Blacksburg sold me what a great young man he is he's had to pay his dues uh, James Jackson who's now playing with the Cleveland Browns is it's, it's one of the things when you play at a great school sometimes you have to wait your time Second and goal, all the action to the right. Portis takes it that way and scores. Fifth rushing touchdown of the year for the junior five again four yard run I should say and Seavers comes on for the extra point to make it 24 to 3 57 yard drive and the offsides on the punting situation cost the Mountaineers a touchdown Keep blocking up front, pushing, pushing the defense back. They've been doing that for the last three or four plays and started to control the line of scrimmage. Offensive line, look at the look at the double team there. They got a seal block by the tight end. And the rest of the way is just Clinton Portis finding the corner and getting the touchdown. Najee Davenport. Davenport, a very good block. As you see him taking out Brian King. King is in there because Richard Bryant, you saw their best cover corner, head to the locker room. He's been bothered by those cramps. And Lee mentioned Najee Davenport, and we've talked about him quite a bit about his athletic ability, but it's that it takes a commitment for a, a former tailback to be willing to lead the way up front and to be able to sacrifice your body in practice. I mean, that's a heck of a commitment because you're, you go from being the guy getting the ball to now the guy up front leading the way. And, He's right. Nice, nice block there by Davenport to help him get into the end zone. And that offensive line uh, gets their just due. Good performance here to start the second half. You look at that number 73, Joaquin Gonzalez. He's a great story. He weighed 225 pounds when he came out of high school, and he passed up a chance to go to Harvard so he could walk on to Miami and play football for him. He graduated already with a with an BS degree and he's going to get an MBA in January that kid right there now that 42 straight games he started 
there is a kind of guy that's going to be a tremendous asset to the Miami football program after he graduates. Christopher Columbus High School in Miami and Gonzalez a great story in this area his parents are Cuban American he's very proud of his heritage mm -hmm. and his status as a cane and you know in these parts I got off the wrong exit tonight on 836 <laughs> so driving back through Little Havana and you know you appreciate the people like Gonzalez who are so loved and oh. respected in this area he goes back to schools and talks to kids he was never the best athlete but he tries to tell everyone somewhere inside you've got a unique gift and the Miami Hurricanes to a lot of the kids who live right in this area around the Orange Bowl are uh, heroes and Gonzalez spreads the word to them. We're going to talk right after this kickoff with uh, the coach of the other undefeated team in the Big East the Virginia Tech Hokies Frank Beamer's on the other end of the line. Let's watch uh, this kick that Terry will take out from four yards deep trying to make something happen finding a seam and getting out to the 32 yard line. Nice return for the all time leading kick return man at West Virginia. The Mountaineers lost 35 nothing to Frank Beamer's Hokies and the coach joins us from Blacksburg getting ready for the game Saturday against Syracuse. Frank your thoughts on the first two plus quarters here tonight so far. Well I think it's uh, been a little bit like the weather there probably uh, for uh, Mr. a little popular than I'd like but uh, I know this uh, West Virginia is giving great effort Miami is a great football team. One of the great players see is uh, Miami. Yeah, we definitely do see Miami is for real. We'll uh, get back to Frank in a second. First down for Jones. His pass to the tight end, Torrey Johnson. First catch of the year, or third, fourth catch of the year, excuse me. It's a couple of yards. It's second and eight. Well, Frank, uh, the conversation came up here at Miami with Larry Coker. How do you deal with the BCS with your team? Do you use it as a motivating factor? You just let the kids handle it within the team and just worry about the football. Well, you better keep playing. You know, the only way you can affect the uh, BCS right now is play well on Saturday. Uh, you can talk about playing and they're playing and who's winning uh, when they play. It. All this. Really the only how you play on Saturday. Jerome McDougal with the sack there. Frank, you have a game against Syracuse here coming up on uh, Saturday, regionally on ESPN Plus at uh, noon Eastern. And people talk about being tested as the year goes on. Uh, what have you seen as you watch the Syracuse film this week in regards to what kind of a test you'll have? I didn't hear quite what you said. Uh, you're talking about Syracuse? Yes, we'll get back to the question after this play. Frank, third and 16, the sack of Jones. There by Jamal Green. That was the question, Coach, about Syracuse game this week, and your thoughts going in. Well, they're very good. You know, they beat Auburn uh, two weeks ago, and then Auburn turns around and beats Florida. So uh, they've they've shown that they can play with the best in the country, and uh, they won six in a row. Uh, a pause pass going is always going to have a team ready to play, uh, very well coached. So we uh, we know what kind of ball, uh, ball game can be this. Flag down as Philip Buchanan's return comes to the 41. Kirk, go ahead. Coach, the, uh, the Syracuse game, and you talked with us last week on College Game Day about, hey, we're not looking at Miami down the road December 1st. We're worried about Syracuse right now. Your thoughts on the way this team is improving. We know about their defense, and they're going to challenge you, but their offense is starting to come together with R.J. Anderson uh, under center. Well, you're exactly right. Uh, defense, they played great, and, and offense, and now they got four offensive linemen back from last year, and I think Anderson's getting in there and giving them some uh, good spark there. And Mungroke, uh, you know, he's averaging almost 100 yards a game. Uh, wide receivers are excellent. They're very dangerous. This this is a very, very good football team. Uh, they lost uh, two games early for a start the year there against Georgia Tech. And both of those teams are really good. And since then, they've won six straight. They're, they're really, uh, really very good. Frank, uh, how is your team coming along as the season going are they improving in certain areas and which which areas do you think you guys need the most work well I think we're getting better you know our defense uh, uh, has played very well all year long our offense uh, we got a lot of new people when you replace the Suggs and the Michael Vick uh, you know you that's two pretty uh, really good players who you're replacing and but I think we're getting better there uh, Grant Noel quarterback played very well for the most part we play out of our backs. Uh, our offense is getting a little bit better each week. So uh, I think that's uh, probably the biggest area and, uh, of, of improvement, and that's where we need to improve. 
offsetting penalties here. We're going to have a re-kick, and we, then we're going to see Phil Elmation, the defensive coordinator for West Virginia, his unit on the field. Phil worked with you and Bud Foster there, and this is the defense that they now use as a model at West Virginia, the Virginia Tech style of defense. How has your defense this season gone through the first half of the season as, in terms of getting better on the field? Well, I think we've gotten great leadership. Uh, we're a group. Uh, and most of our starters back. They get at them. They play fast. Uh, they're a fast group, but they play fast. They don't take many false steps. They get good reads. Bud Foster uh, got them playing hard all the time. We've really been pleased with that. We know we better get ready for a test here Saturday, though. Coach, can you compare this defense now with a year of experience? Last year, you had so many new players, but this year's group so far with the group that all of America knew about two years ago with that special unit that helped you get to the national championship game. Well, I think we're getting ready to start a stretch here that we'll know a lot more what we're really like. Uh, I, I'll say this, we played very hard, very well for the most part, but uh, so far. But uh, I think coming up here Saturday, that's going to uh, be a real, real test for us. Frank, uh, I know the week is busy. We appreciate your time on a Thursday night. Best of luck Saturday against Syracuse. Well, thank you. And I will tell you guys, now, it's a lightning hit down there. Get away from Lee. <laughs> <laughs> At well, least I'd away from you. his car. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Frank, thank you. Take care. All right. Thank you, guys. Frank Beaver, head coach of the Virginia Tech Hokies. Najee Davenport made that catch, and as you see, lost his helmet on the sideline. And as soon as his helmet came off, the ball was dead right there. It's a rule in college football this year, the second the helmet, again this year, the second the helmet comes off of the ball carrier, the uh, ball is dead at the spot. So it's first and 10 at midfield for Miami, leading 24 to 3 here. First down run with Portis. He picks up about five, tackled by James Davis, and here's Jerry. We talked to uh, Frank Beamer a moment ago, guys. You know, and I was looking at the Miami notes and realized that in cold weather games, Miami is 0 for 3 when the kickoff was uh, 34 degrees or less. And so I decided to call uh, Blacksburg, Virginia, and find out what the average temperature is on December 1st when Miami is headed to play Tech. And guess what, guys? The average low that day is 26 degrees on December 1st. And by the way, the forecast of Farmer's Almanac, <laughs> 6 to 12 inches of snow accumulation throughout the region that day. Big run, Frank Gore. Might go, will go, touchdown. <laughs> 45 yards for the freshman who grew up right around campus in Carl Gable. The future of Miami. You have Clinton Portis who continues to do well tonight. Willis McGahee went down with an injury, allowing the true freshman, Frank Gore, to get an opportunity to show what he can do. He has all the tools. They say that the future for Frank Gore is as big as he wants to make it. Larry Coker's been around some great backs in his days, and he thinks as a freshman, true freshman, Frank Gore might be the best he's ever seen. 31-3 Miami. Here you get a taste of what he can do. Good blocking up front. But once he gets to the second level, you can see why he has the special ability. He has speed. He gets into the open field. Nobody will catch him. If I was Miami, I would move McGahee, Willis McGahee, 6'1", 220, in for Najee Davenport. And I'd put Portis and Gore at that tailback with Dorsey and, and Jones is gone, but Anderson's back, and Sands, you know what, they might be as good in the church in the running back position, and the White House next year is they are right now. The big problem is they're going to miss that offensive line. Exactly. Ken Dorsey's made it very clear, and we'll yep. be sure we'll talk about it later tonight, that he, his intentions are to come back. I, I like your thought about the game he may oh, be yeah. moving into that fullback spot, because it's really not a true fullback where you get a lead and be that glorified guard. It's an athletic position within this offense, and he's a bigger size. And you have Gore and Portis and McGahee up in that backfield. You have to find a way to get them all on the field to maximize their ability. And Rich Rodriguez's team falls behind 31 to 3 now. Very tough circumstances here tonight with the quarterback being lost. But tough circumstances uh, relative uh, for Rich as you talk about football. His uh, wife, Rita, lost uh, her dad. Which his father in law passed away uh, earlier this week, back on Tuesday. 
Both Rich and his wife are from West Virginia. Back at home, around the dad who fell ill. Sean Swindles kick off the turn down the sideline, takes him to the 35, is pushed out of bounds. Those are the things that we continue to talk about Miami. Hurting him, blow to the blow to the uh, yeah. to the head, 15 more yards. Yep. West Virginia player injured as well. I beg your pardon, the Miami player. Sorry about that. Yeah, there is one from each side. Yeah. A big hit. Kick coverage. Both medical staffs, unfortunately, have been busy here tonight. Well, we talked to uh, Frank Beamer from Virginia Tech about his uh, big Big East game against Syracuse. There's another Big East team in action on ESPN. Primetime Saturday night. We will see Carlisle Holiday and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish at the Chestnut Hill. Take on a really good running back of William Green, Boston College. Notre Dame on the heights up Chestnut Hill 745 Eastern primetime Saturday on ESPN. I think it was 93 when we first took the first game day show on the road. We had Florida State Notre Dame and Florida right. State beat. I mean Notre Dame beat Florida State number one and the next week guess what happened. Boston College win. Over Notre that, Dame. that last second field goal that oh, kind of was, was a wiffle yeah, ball yeah. going through there. You know why Boston Florida. College plays so well against Notre Dame. Those are all the guys that wanted to go to all those Catholic kids that wanted to go to Notre Dame that weren't yeah. quite good enough. They go to BC instead. What do you guys think of Notre Dame's no way units. Not a fan. I like tradition at Notre Dame. Jamel Weaver fortunately up same true with high key Johnson the backup fullback for West Virginia. Their big collision on kick coverage here. You can see the collision. Braxton 21. Boom. The big block. And then watch the late hit. Late hit coming in right to the head. Yep. Boom. You know, we're big hits everywhere. We don't need that junk from Braxton standing over a guy. No. Either. No. You know, it's 31 to 3. You haven't done anything tonight. You make a block. Keep going. Yeah. I mean. Act you, like you've been there before. I, I have you figured out? If, have you guys figured out if, if the officials have quite bought in 100% to the to the penalties when it comes to the celebration and bringing the individual attention to yourself? Coburn lost the football, recovered by Sean Terry of West Virginia. Not the showboating part of the flag, which uh, some leagues are calling with more regularity than others. Right. Right. It's very as we travel the country. It's very inconsistent Some leagues allow it other leagues are a little bit tighter and and that's that's fine the way leagues call certain plays It's kind of like baseball with umpires and their strike zones mm -hmm. hockey officials who will swallow their whistle in the third period you, you get a sense in your league the problem becomes when you get to bowl game. You get to a bowl game or a non-conference huge game could be a big factor Jones pass is incomplete <laughs> It was intended for Michael Page, the speedster. There's Phil Braxton, the junior, who has 25 catches leading this team. I want to say something about Rich Rodriguez and his staff because from a coach's standpoint, he had an excellent game plan. You could tell at the beginning of the game that his offensive plan was well, well conceived because it was working so well. Then he got Lewis Hurt and psh, the pressure got on him. But Rich Rodriguez and his staff, he had a good plan. He just got his quarterback hurt. Well, right there, freshman Jones is sacked by Jerome McDougal for Pompa Beach. The defense Vins are doing a good job getting pressure. McDougal's second sack of the night. Third sack of the last five plays for the Canes. Jamal Green's also been able to get in there and goes back to the importance of being able to pressure with four. He just goes right by the tight end, makes the play, the tackle rather. The punt by Todd James is fielded on the bounce and some room to run for a moment for ethnic Sands. He's taken down at the 32 yard line. I have a question for you guys. It's 31 3, 2 minutes and 14 seconds to go. Do you take your quarterback Dorsey out of the ball game? No. Okay, why not? I say no. Why? Tell me why. Mike, why, why do you say that? I let him play into the fourth quarter. Okay, good. I'm not saying that margin of victory is the most important thing. It's been de-emphasized in some of these mm -hmm. polls. But if you can get another score and get to 38-3, mm -hmm. then another score, late score, won't be as significant because this is your championship. 
being factored in. You got to lead games by 20. Look at Gore. Great moves to the 46. Real deal. They were going to redshirt him. As a true freshman, they said, you know what? He picked up the offense so quick, and he's so special, as Kirk said before. We just got to make a play. He's going to be hes going to be a great back, maybe one of the greatest to ever play if he can stay healthy. You see the natural ability. Oh. He's, he's just a true freshman. He's still picking up the scheme. And things like pass protection, which is, is very important in this, this scheme with the backs. But uh, he's a great back. And, you know, you go back to Lee's question. I think the score is irrelevant at this point. I think... Ken Dorsey has to play well tonight. They need to allow him to continue to go out there and try to get uh, try to get his rhythm back before they end this game. With Gore Ding, Quentin Portis comes in and he carries it out to the 45. Score on that ankle a little bit. Remember one thing about Larry Coker. He had old Joe Paterno beat so bad at halftime it was embarrassing. You know what he did? He called off the dog. Yeah, sure. So I'm not so sure that. He won't, and as you said, I would. In the beginning of the fourth quarter, I'd put my second quarter back. Yeah, you'd let Dorsey stay out for this drive. Yes, for this drive, or to the end of the quarter, that bring more center and say congratulations. This is quick toss. These passes not hit with the rhythm that they were normally, but a little better now. Ethnic Sands there. He has a first down. You know, you talk about Larry Coker, and you mentioned Joe Paterno. Yeah. It's his first game. At Happy Valley, 100,000 people, all the emotion of that night at State College. And he said before the game, he goes out and he sees Joe. <laughs> Joe had a great line. Joe said, hey, good luck. Good, great good day to see you. Welcome to college football coaching. Nice team to start with. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Ain't, ain't that the truth? Butch Davis has done a remarkable job rebuilding this program. The cupboard is loaded. Freshman like Gore coming in, eight yard first down run. You know, we, we don't mean to disparage any of the work of this staff, which has changed significantly and has a first year offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, and head coach. And never has that combination, those three people, won a national championship first year in their role at the at a school. But Butch Davis built an unbelievable foundation that these guys are coming in and managing. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it's an experienced football team. It's hungry. These guys are on a mission. Every single week, you expect them to play at a high level because of what happened to them last year. It all goes back to what happened to them last year, and that's been their entire focus, getting ready for this football season. When you have guys that, like an Edward Reed and a Ken Dorsey, the leaders of this team, it really helps your chances of, uh, from a coaching perspective of being successful. And continuing the tradition of Miami football as this third quarter comes to an end. Ken Dorsey moving up on the ranks. One away from the all-time career touchdown pass. Listen, Steve Walsh hits up top there. He's here to watch the Hurricanes go 31 to 3 up on the Mountaineers on College Football Thursday night. We go to the fourth quarter from South Florida. Rain has cleared out. Inside the Orange Bowl, Miami leads 31 to 3 over West Virginia on College Football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. We start the fourth with third and a yard. Dorsey to throw. Swing it incomplete to the 12 yard line for Andre Johnson. And Andre Johnson is something. In the meetings yesterday, I was really impressed the way he looks. He looks like one of those big, giant NFL receivers. Watch his right there, the way he adjusted this. Remember, he was a Big East co-offensive player of the week versus Florida State when he had five catches for 111 yards and two touchdowns against the Knowles. Timeout here taken by Miami. Johnson's a special athlete. He missed a lot of the spring because of track and some injuries, but the more he's around football, the more you say he's only a sophomore, he is really special. Circuit City presents Expo 2001. 30 days of what's new, what's hot, and what's next. Featuring live demos of HDTV, digital photography, high-speed internet access, and more. All this month at Circuit City. Circuit City, we're with you.
For his first attempt, a 360 Tomahawk. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Amazing. And now the alley-oop reverse. With a bite-sized, bowl-shaped design. Oh, my. And what everyone's been waiting for, the two-handed thunder. For the perfect dip every time. Oh, the judges have to be impressed. New Tostito Scoops. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. Car and driver rated our Subaru WRX higher than the Audi S4 Quattro and the BMW 330xi in both handling and acceleration from zero to 60. But in one important category, Audi and BMW did rate much higher. That's the beauty of Subaru all-wheel drive. Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filter for when you feel the heat. Get refreshment down cold. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Going for 12 rounds is all about stamina. That's why I like high endurance from Old Spice. No deodorant protects better. And it lasts longer because it evaporates more slowly. High endurance lasts longer than I do. But I'm working on that. Cage 31, Mountaineers 3. Kirsten 10 for Miami. Dorsey, the quick hit is incomplete for Johnson. Check our ESPN2 game track. Those of you just joining us, here's the tap in in the second half and the game tonight. Well, we've been able to see Edward Reed once again be a tremendous leader for the Hurricanes, coming up with two big interceptions to get the momentum back to Miami. Well, the offensive line from Miami started to establish the run. They look really good in, in the second half. And West Virginia's offense held in check most of those 187 first half yards came when they had the run going. Brad Lewis, their starting quarterback, left because of injury and uh, did not return. Kind of a whiplash in, flash injury. As Frank Gore carries, goes nowhere. Lewis, the senior, out, and Derek Jones, the redshirt freshman, who's certainly nowhere near the passing threat, has had to come in the game. There is Lewis, the wrap around his neck. He's come back out here in the latter stages of the second half. Good to see him uh, up and walking around. Jerry said he was getting worked on in the locker room. Derek Jones. And the offense has only mustered 68 yards after the first quarter. Third and 11 here. And Dorsey for the touchdown to Johnson. And Ken Dorsey joins some elite companies. Vinny Testaverde and Steve Walsh. 48 career touchdown passes equaling the Miami school record. And there is Steve on hand to see his record tied. Remember you said, when do you take him out? Now's a good time. Now's a good time. And he, he said that to us. If he gets a big lead, no matter what game, he's going to play the young players. He had the second offensive line in there that time. They thought, that's the group that needs to get in there. Exactly. And they did a nice offensive line job, I tell you. And good pass protection. Now, this is just a quick slant post to Andre Johnson. Good play. But I like, look at that offensive line. Big, nice-looking guys in there. They got Carey, 346 pounds. They got Rodriguez, 275. Wilkins, they got a nice-looking second line. Nice throw. The guy's impossible to stop when he goes on an inside slant route. Yeah, and you mentioned a second offensive line. Next year for Miami, that's that's huge because if Dorsey comes back and he said he will come back, the backs are there, the receivers are there, everything is there except they lose the majority of that offensive line. So they're going to need to be able to retool that up front. And when you can tell a football team that's being well prepared 
for the future. Behind the senior left tackle, they got a freshman in Joseph. Behind the senior right tackle, they got a sophomore in Gary. Besides the, the right guard, they got a junior. They got young people behind every one of the older people getting a chance to play. The best team I've ever seen in all of football doing that was Nebraska. Nebraska brought their offensive linemen on every single year, and they never took a step backwards. How about the one they have now? Ooh. Cody. Oh, he is player. unbelievable. He's a great player. Huge. A chance to Huge. see him. Their, op their opener against TCU is fabulous. That's going to be some kind of matchup against that uh, Oklahoma defense on Saturday. Game day will be there. Kick goes out of bounds, and Doc has a man who has company in the record book. Exactly, Michael. Steve Walsh, one of the uh, lineage of great quarterbacks here in the hurricane history. And, Steve, we were watching a moment ago when Ken Dorsey threw the touchdown pass, and I don't think anyone was cheering any harder than you. Absolutely. I mean, he can have the record. I want him to get one more. I came down here tonight to see him break it. So the record that I really want him to get, though, is my winning percentage. I was 23-1. and one. If he can break that record, he'll be a national champion. He'll get one of these. Well, they're on their way right now with playing awfully well. You gave Miami their second of four national titles. Now, break it down for us. How about these Hurricanes and Ken Dorsey this year overall as a team? They're, they're loaded. They've, they've got great team speed. they got great depth. Offensively, they're extremely efficient and explosive. And defensively, they fly around like unbelievable. And this young man can get it done. Obviously, the records will fall. Thanks for coming down and being a part of this uh, record night. Absolutely. Thank you. Guys, Steve Walsh. Thank you, Jerry Cobra in the run. Gains about six. Steve finished fourth in the Heisman voting in 1988. There are the numbers for Ken Dorsey on the night. Not as good a first half, but uh, much better in the second half. Ken Dorsey is one of those quarterbacks that will go home and look at the film with Rob Trudzinski and, and find the mistakes that he made and want to continue to improve. The numbers were okay for him, but he could have had a, a much better night. He'll be the first one to tell you that. Flag down. It's least talked about his roommate, Brett Romberg, the center. Yeah. Dorsey, a uh, great story about him from Romberg this year. <laughs> Everybody was going to the beach, and Dorsey said, I'm going to stay here and watch him tape and they just laughed at him but that's Ken Dorsey he is a leader and uh, for many people he is one of the leaders in the Heisman uh, list if you will the watch list as we yeah. kind of build through October and candidates eliminate themselves or get eliminated as their teams fall off a little bit I think in the Heisman being so close this year I think if a guy loses a game I think he takes a step backwards because so many teams yeah, exactly. with Heisman candidates are right. teams so good. Cobra, minus one. Miami's history with the beautiful trophy from the Downtown Athletic Club includes Vinny Testaverde and Gino Toretta, 1992. And will Dorsey be next this year or next, as Kirk said, and he has reiterated when asked at three different times this year, coming back for a senior season. Second and ten for West Virginia. Their quarterback has nowhere to go again. That time the defensive play comes from John Square, who's had four pretty big plays. Derek Jones on the tackle there. There was uh, Ken Dorsey, as we asked him yesterday, about the Heisman 2001 and the race. It's not really my obsession. It's not something I, I think about constantly or, you know, I'm desperate to win. Uh, I just feel like that if we win games and if we're, we're playing in the Rose Bowl at the end of the year, then then it'll be a special season. And, and if I don't win, win the Heisman Trophy, it'll still be a special season. So, um, and, and there's always next year. Well, the numbers are impressive. Going to go to 20 and one with the victory here tonight. Only three 300 plus yard games. What a hit. As Coburn lost the ball and it belongs to Miami. Philip Buchanan took that ball right away from Avon Coburn. He was lining him up for the hit. And the ball came with it. We talked about it in a pregame show. And Kirk, you and I talked off camera. The best looking all around secretary in the nation is this Miami team. There's Buchanan, 31, making a hit. Lewis, 23, intercepted a pass. Reed got two. And Rumpf is a, probably might be one of the best of all of them. Watch this hit. Boom! Oh, and then he gets the ball. He came up with the ball there. I, I thought that might be an incomplete pass, but it looks like he held onto it long enough. They're in corners. Mike Rumpf gets most of the recognition by yeah. the NFL scouts, but I think Philip Buchanan might be one of the best cover corners in college football. It reminds me a lot of Aaron Glenn when he was at Texas A&M. Great return man, also can cover about any receiver. 
Derek Kruitt, if the redshirt freshman's in at quarterback, Moore tries to make some moves. Tackled by Sean Hackett, the senior from Trenton, New Jersey. So the backup comes in for the Canes. Redshirted last year. Dad also named Derek. Florida Gator. Played for the Raiders and the Niners in the NFL. Good running quarterback who, uh, in his senior year of high school, threw 26 touchdowns. But as you see, limited action in 2001. Jared Payton, son of the late great Walter Payton, in the lineup, leading the blocks. For Gore, on the move. Touchdown. Wow, he is <laughs> really, really good. future right here we're seeing it tonight and you have to believe the closer they get to some of the bigger games down the road he, you're going to see more and more of Frank Gore you see he's not only a speed back he has great strength lower center the, the uh, lower body is very very strong low center of gravity and he's able to break tackles and then have the speed to get to the corner what I like there was his vision Did you see his head it was on a pedestal looking for those guys that are finding that hole I'm telling you forget about next year that's what I'm saying. I mean, sure get that guy team. ready for Virginia Tech and Blacksburg. That's the most I mean, stress-free 100-yard game I've seen. 124 for Gore. Miami at 42. You know the rules. It's the law of the jungle. This month, Pride Fighting goes wild with beasts from the east as natural enemies face off for survival of the fiercest. Former UFC champion Don Fry makes his pride debut in an explosive return to the martial arts, gunning for Mark Coleman's glory. Get ready to roar when Pride Fighting unleashes beasts from the East. Playing this month on Direct Ticket Pay Per View on Direct TV, unrehearsed, uncaged. Young, back to throw. In trouble, he's going to be sacked. No, gets away. He runs, gets away again, goes to the 40, gets away again, to the 35. Cuts back at the 30, to the 20, the 50, the 10, he dies, touchdown 49ers. I don't believe it! I don't believe it! Football Saturday, the rejuvenated Irish take their winning streak on the road as they battle BC. Notre Dame, Boston College, 745 Saturday on ESPN. driver rated our Subaru WRX higher than the Audi S4 Quattro and the BMW 330xi in both handling and acceleration from 0 to 60. But in one important category, Audi and BMW did rate much higher. That's the beauty of Subaru all-wheel drive. ESPN 2's Thursday Night College Football is presented by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. And in part by Tostito Scoops, the dip lover's chip. Two touchdowns for Frank Gore here and uh, Ken Dorsey and Steve Walsh. Quarterbacks past and present Miami to sit and chat about 45 and 3 on the scoreboard. Do you know two guys when they lose? Uh, two games? Two games so far. And 39. What do you say? He was 23 and 1. And of course, he's going to get to 20 and 1 here with the win tonight. So 43 and 2. And two. Miami has scored on its last four possessions. And a heck of a tackle by Sean Taylor on the opposite 26, Michael Page. Frank Gore with that impressive touchdown run. He's taking it over 100 yards for the evening. It's a guy who carried it 19 times for a buck 30 in the first five games this year. He's almost equal that total. About 12 snaps here tonight. Keep running hard, Avon Coburn, across the 30 into the 33-yard line. 
As Miami brings in a lot of its defensive reserves. Now you get into a situation when it comes to Larry Coker where he has you offensively you look at Frank Gordon and you think it's a no doubt no brain put him in the game let him carry the football look what he can do you have an older player who's, who's kind of had to sit back and wait and is very talented in Clinton Portis he's gonna have to juggle that because you don't want any dissension you don't want to mess with the chemistry because that's one of the things that's most unique about Miami these guys aren't worrying about the headlines and if you start to play all of a sudden a true freshman right away, and all of a sudden there you got to no worry penalty. about how is the older back going to handle no that and starts to uh, separate the team. Timeout has been taken. No flag called. Miami's out of timeouts. And you know what? I think they're going to be just okay without them. <laughs> Look, I know Circuit City's doing this expo thing, but we're busy. Get what you need. We're out of here. Agreed? Yes. We know how you feel. It's Expo 2001. 30 days of non-stop demonstrations of what's hot and what's next in electronics. September 30th through October 31st. Circuit City, we're with you. Car and driver rated our Subaru WRX higher than the Audi S4 Quattro and the BMW 330xi in both handling and acceleration from zero to 60. But in one important category, Audi and BMW did rate much higher. That's the beauty of Subaru all-wheel drive. College football Saturday at noon on ESPN. Now that he's tied for the most wins with a bear, Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions look to put their coach into the record books against Ohio State. At noon on ESPN2, still smarting from last week's upset loss, Western takes on number 20, Purdue, as the Boilermakers try to stay in the Big Ten race. Ohio State, Penn State at noon on ESPN. Northwestern, Purdue at noon on ESPN2. It all starts on ESPN at 10.30 Eastern with College Game Day, Saturday. I didn't want to interrupt the lyrics. Uh, I was told by uh, by uh, somebody who knows Miami very well that Thursday night's a big night, the big night down in the Grove. Coconut Grove. So maybe that held the attendance back a little bit tonight. Avon Coburn gets out to the 39-yard line. Thursdays are the hot night down in the Grove for uh, those of you planning. Really? Yes, trips to South Florida. Just what I was told. Thursday night is the night you bring out your best stuff. Bring, out your <laughs> bring the A game. Huh? <laughs> Second and five. Coburn is snowed under, and you made the point about the second teamers. <laughs> These defensive players are just as hungry because they want to prove the defensive line rotation of 10 brings a lot of these guys in on a regular basis. Sean Taylor, a redshirt freshman out there, you saw him 26. Among others, Antrell Roll in the game. It's a, it's a young defense, too. You talk about the youth on the offense. This is a young football team in general. It's just going to keep getting better. Third and eight. And Derek Jones' pass is incomplete. Philip Buchanan nearly had a pick of the pass intended for Phil Braxton. If there's going to be an area next year that's going to be of concern, it'll be the defensive secondary. Because sure. they start three seniors and one junior. And I'm sure they got good young kids coming in. But the front seven, there's not a single, there's only one senior on the front seven. <laughs> there is Buchanan just drifting back to the punt from the 26. Working the sidelines, he steps out of bounds. He's got solid on return. Here tonight, 39-yard punt, 12-yard return. Here's the Miller Genuine Draft storyline tonight. Miami capitalized with 14 points off turnover, came in the first half. Two turnovers by West Virginia. Dorsey's thrown two touchdowns, tied the Miami career record of Testaverde and Walsh. He's now been pulled. West Virginia's offense has done nothing here in the second half, while Miami's just kind of 
kicked it easily from second to third to fourth gear, and they are cruising. Janet Payton. There's a tackle. Lost a couple of yards there. Jared Payton, much like Najee Davenport, has moved to that fullback spot. 6'2", 210. Of course, with his dad being ill and uh, passing away last year, Jared Payton spent the year away from football. And did not play last season. Has bulked up in between and now runs behind Davenport in that running back slot. And the flag is down here at the 852 mark things that I've seen in Miami the three times we've seen them in person is they're kind of developing certain characteristic where they start slow and then finish strong when, when we saw them on a Thursday night against Pittsburgh remember Pittsburgh early the first couple drives looked yep. like they were going to be competitive Miami eventually caught it made the adjustments caught fire and blew them out same thing we saw them against Florida State where they had three yards rushing in the first half opened it up the second half and started to pour it on tonight West Virginia competitive early and again second half is where they start to really take over football games it's depth it's also the adjustment Payton tripped up and he's getting ready to get free in the secondary there and the longer a game goes Black on the longer the game goes on the more talent comes about you know the team could play with all kinds of emotion like West Virginia did at the beginning but sooner or later talent takes over and that's what's happened. Miami just more talented than the rest of the football teams they're playing. Dead ball. Personal fouls will offset. And it's third down. We've mentioned Butch Davis a lot tonight. But that's the area where it's not only the first team that has talent. When you bring in the second team, you don't lose any speed. You don't, you don't sense a drop off. Oh, you lose experience, yeah. but you don't lose athletic ability. The, the scholarships now are finally to the point where you have to have them to be competitive on a national basis, which they didn't have going back to when they were suffering. That's a good point. People forget they lost 31 scholarships over a three-year stretch, and that 97 class uh, that had Najee Davenport in it, and we talked about Bigel, the offensive lineman. Also in there was uh, Reggie Wayne, Santana, Moss, Dan Morgan. That's the group that got it going again. Pass complete for a first down. So they go to the air on third and ten. Pick it up with Kellen Winslow, the son of former NFL great tight end. Here's Jerry. And Michael, people might think because uh, Miami's a top-ranked football team that they are a senior-laden football team. That is not the case at all. They have only 13 seniors on of the 83 scholarship players. In fact, 58% of their players, 48 on the football team, are underclassmen, either freshmen or sophomores. You saw Frank Gore a minute ago, so a very young Hurricane football team with a very, very bright future. I are so many of those, so few of those scholarship players seniors because they had to play when they came in. So a lot of guys went out four quick years. Tudor showing some dancing ability. And he's brought down uh, right at the line of scrimmage. It's a very good point, Jerry. This is a team that's going to be around for quite some time back at the top of the pole. Currently number one, both the coaches and the media poll, and will stay that way, although they came out in the BCS rankings at number four and might drop after this game. We'll explain why in a moment. Makes Miami fans happy. <laughs> They're saying it's 45-3. I don't need to be hearing about that BCS. Jared Payton dancing and prancing the way his dad used to. Dropped a couple of yards there. Let's look at the BCS standings. That came out on Monday. With Oklahoma and Nebraska, the one-two game coming up. The two Big East teams at four and five. The one-loss team started Texas and Michigan and Tennessee. Maryland still unbeaten and Washington State still unbeaten out in Pullman and before the conversation begins here reminder we need to flash this up with all the BCS talk I've heard a lot of people who don't spend a lot of time around college football rip the BCS that's fine you may not like it remember this is not meant for the snapshot in October it's meant for the end of the season in December to decide who's going where now I'll let you guys weigh in it's a marathon not a sprint and the marathon is only halfway over so let it Oh, it's great. And there's one team that's not on that. That's the mighty Florida Gators. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's get to Miami, number one in the polls. Oklahoma, number one in the BCS. There are the factors with each team. 
you see where Miami's number goes higher because their strength of schedule who they have played this year 96 is their national schedule right the fourth down puck goes into the end zone a touchback West Virginia ball at the 20. we're gonna step out and have more BCS talk and maybe explain it for some of the people who can't really realize why Larry Coker's number one team in the land is fourth in the BCS Miami will stay undefeated 6 and 0. The victory here 3 and 0 in the conference with uh, the three toughest Big East opponents still ahead for Miami, Boston College on the road November 10th, Syracuse comes in on the 17th and at Virginia Tech on December 1. Well, a first down run for Coburn. Avon goes across the 30. Avon Coburn continues to rack up yardage here tonight. Our ESPN.com Thursday Night Football question of the week. Who's going to win the Heisman? Deshaun Foster getting the most votes from the 32,000 almost voted. Eric Crouch and Dorsey. And the others who've uh, lost here in the last little bit. All in the 3% range. Thank all of you for participating at ESPN.com as West Virginia takes a timeout. We're going to take one as well. Remember Vancouver and Colorado. NHL action is coming up on ESPN2. It's National Hockey Night as well. First and 10 for West Virginia. And the pass is intercepted by Maurice Sykes. A shot from Tim Frost, the backup tight end, and a marker came down because of it. Sykes took a knee after the INT, and it's another West Virginia turnover. Sixth one of the evening, and Sykes' first pick on the season. Sophomore from Monsignor Pace High School here in Miami. Add 15 yards, and bring Miami down to about the 32. Rich Rodriguez still using the. Uh, Games for the teaching phase as this team tries to turn things around in this new era after Don Nealon was the head coach at West Virginia. Well, we talked about the BCS guys in Miami's situation. For everyone who needs a refresher, let's talk about how the BCS breaks down with Miami and Oklahoma. And back to that point, Lee, the computer average and the strength of schedule for Miami, those two factors that bring them down to number four overall. Mm -hmm. The eight computers are broken down and uh, strength of schedule factors so heavily in there. That's what's hurting Miami. Fruit of throws incomplete. They're trying to get him some reps in terms of throwing the ball. Well, here is the whole breakdown. With the computers, you have the eight computers. You drop the high and the low so it doesn't get skewed for one that may favor one part of the country if people think that. And then the schedule strength rank, which factors into the computer, is its own entity two-thirds your opponent's record and one-third the record of your opponent's opponents mm -hmm. and when you look at who Miami's played this year Penn State struggling Rutgers poor Pittsburgh poor Troy State Florida State Florida State's the only team they've played that has a winning record what Miami fans need to relax and understand is there's a long way to go number two you are still going to be playing teams like Syracuse Boston College Washington Virginia Tech so the computers will recognize that the strength of schedule will go up accordingly but I, I think everybody's jumping the gun here assuming they're going to be three or four teams with an undefeated record I, I, I it's so early and I know we're breaking it down and trying to understand it a little bit better but uh, I don't think Miami has as much to worry about as they think I think they're panicking because of what happened last year pass for Winslow is incomplete marker down we also know that Miami and Virginia Tech one of them is not going to be undefeated we also know that Oklahoma and Nebraska is not going to be receiver downfield. Maybe so, both. So the there's a situation Penalties where decline. there's a team out there, Third UCLA, down. that has an opportunity to do very, very well. And then there's the old Florida Gators who are sneaking around. I'm telling you, if a one-loss sure. team gets there, it'll be the Florida Gators because they've got five nationally ranked teams sure. coming up. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's still a long way to go. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, the, the Big 12 the Pac-10 and the Big East is what it looks like it's coming down to. And everybody pointing to certain key games, including one this weekend with Oklahoma and Nebraska. The key games coming up are very, very important. And we're going to, the interesting part, 
Kirk, you and I will probably be in bed most of me. Take a look there. There's, we're going there for sure, right? Yeah. That's, okay. seven. that's, seven, that's 7 a.m. flight tomorrow. That's 7 a.m. <laughs> that's those two right there. Hopefully, we'll get to one of these right here. This one right here, this right? This one's the one I want to go. That's the one you want to go to. That's great. And I know one thing. Definitely there. I'm going there for sure. Even if you guys don't go. I'm going with you. Because that is going to be some game with 29 degrees and snow. From the 30 on fourth down, Britta throws. And the pass is complete. It's going to be shy of the first down, I believe, by about a half yard. Kyle Cobia, the fullback, with his third reception on the season. That'll be Oklahoma-Nebraska rematch that same day, December 1. Big 12 championship game in Dallas. Mm -hmm. We'll be in Blacksburg if everything works out the way everybody assumes. That's right. Cobia shy, so on downs, West Virginia will get it at 4.15 left. Well, you mentioned Oklahoma and Nebraska. It starts at noon Eastern, uh, right after college game day on ABC. A fabulous lineup. The regional games at 3.30. Michigan off the week off. They're a one-loss team in the top ten of the BCS. Watch out for them sneaking around. Yep. Iowa, undefeated Maryland. Can they do it? They yep. go to Tallahassee to take on Florida State. UCLA still undefeated. Gets a Stanford team that knocked off Oregon. And Oregon-Washington State is the late game on the West Coast only at 4 Pacific on ABC. Kirk, you're going to talk about that in our in our first hit yeah, this is, on the college football college yeah, game day, aren't you? It, it, this is, if you're a college football fan, this is it. This is what it's all about. This what is, what, this what advice would you have I to said, a college football fan? I said this is one of those fan. weekends where you just kind of get all your responsibilities and chores out of the way early. early. Get By permission it. from the chief. Get, right. you, have to, you just have to sign a contract with the chief, your <laughs> wife, significant other, and just say, listen, you got to take one for the team here. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll take the NFL Sunday off. It's this Saturday. You have to watch have these to watch. games. It's starting 10:30 Eastern. It's exactly. college game. College game. And then what you need to do is go to the store and get Tostitos with some of that salsa that I like to cheese. All right. Have a Pepsi One and buy it with Discover card. Then you have covered all of Boston our spots. Cover everything. It's nicely. That's nice. Derek Jones took it out to the 39-yard line. This gentleman certainly a candidate to do that. The family, you can bring the kids into the TV room as well. Just kind of take the uh, take the afternoon off. But what a great day it is for college football on Saturday. And Miami can sit back and watch it all transpire. Cooper Rigo runs across midfield to the 46-yard line. Rigo playing for the first time in a couple of weeks. He did not play in the game at Notre Dame. Rigo didn't make the trip to his former school because of the threat of arrest for trespassing. Back in uh, 98, Rigo was dismissed from Notre Dame and told not to return to the private school. He uh, vehemently, vehemently denied the accusations uh, that he assaulted a student during his time at Notre Dame four years back. And Rigo was very public in his saying that it was not the right charge. However, he, in Rick Rodriguez's terms, did the mature thing, didn't want to put the team in harm, and said he would stay home for the game last week and not go to Notre Dame. But he's back on the field here this week. The Mountaineers are going to fall to 2-5 and five and be in a position where they must win out in 2001 to go back to a bowl game. They went to the Music City Bowl last year. Quincy Wilson on the inside handoff. Takes it to the 44-yard line. As the cadre of backs is emptied out here. This will be a fourth consecutive loss for West Virginia. Their only two wins were over Ohio and Kent State out of the MAC. Wilson on the inside handoff lost uh, seven yards. What is going on down on this Miami side? You know what? You go you go back to Miami back in the 80s. People think about the fatigues and how tough and intimidating they were. This is the Miami of today. The entire fourth quarter. There's Najee Davenport dumping a bucket on Edward Reed. This has been going on for the entire fourth quarter. They've been sporting water at each other. Everybody's like fighting over who's going to get the big the big jug of water to pour it on top of the other guy's head. It's, it's, and it's the offensive line that's been uh, starting the whole thing down. 
a long way from the fatigues. Yes. Jones on the move, scrambling. Chased down by Square again. He's been, Johnny Square has been everywhere tonight. Jerry Punch, uh, we know that these guys are going to Lincoln for Oklahoma and Nebraska. Where are you off to? Well, I'll head out to Phoenix International Raceway tomorrow, Michael, for our live flag-to-flag -flag coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Chevy Silverado 150. We're on at 6.30 Eastern time on ESPN2. Next to last race, you've been watching a potential national champion tonight. We could possibly crown a national champion tomorrow out at Phoenix as Jack Sprague has a 97-point lead. Who's behind him, Doc? Jack Sprague uh, leads it. Uh, Joe Rutman is Joe behind Rutman. him, the veteran Joe Rutman. Sprague will start on the outside front row alongside Stacey Compton, the NASCAR Winston Cup regular, is on the pole. And uh, so we'll head out there early tomorrow for our live coverage, Mike. Perfect. Jones, the keeper. Nice the promo, Jerry. <laughs> Yours was good, Lee, but that was That was a better promo was than good. ours. That was energy. I mean, that was... I will watch all of you work hard. And then I've got the late night shift. The pass to Quincy Wilson is complete. It's his first catch of the year, and he's out of bounds. In Pullman for Oregon. Washington State. That's going to be fun. Six and one against seven and zero. Oh. Weather's nice, but 38 degrees. The loose. It'll be fun. You can how about having there. dinner in Idaho? I'm, I'm, you tell me. I'm going to go down. Make, make sure I, I cross Idaho off my list. It'll be the 47th state I've been to. Did you, you, need to, you need to get me a W out of Washington State. You want to go to the loose? We want to. We want to go there for the UCLA game. Jones is taken down. Spoke with Mike Bellotti today. I don't think he would no. <laughs> yeah. really prescribe to that. Do you happen to, have you ever looked at the map on how far it is from Atlanta to Spokane to the Palouse? Mike can tell us. It's longer from Miami, pal. 2,961 miles tomorrow. That Holy is. Man. West Virginia taking a time out here with 22 seconds. A reminder, Dave Strader and Brian Engblom going to bring you Vancouver, Colorado from the Pepsi Center. National Hockey Night on ESPN2 is coming up next. The uh, Avalanche have been struggling in the early going. Patrick Waugh battling injury. Vancouver's lost Andrew Castles for a month. We'll check them out. Well, guys, Miami, as we uh, step out here, 45-3, very solid effort all the way around for Ken Dorsey and company. Uh, slow in the first half, but as you mentioned, Kirk, it's been kind of a pattern. They picked it up as they went on. Philip Buchanan. Big punt return, and then the secondary took advantage of the quarterback change. That was really the change of the game. The secondary coming up with big plays, interception by Lewis, the pass uh, early in the football game to Jeremy Shockey, and then we saw Frank Gore just take over the second half with some big runs. 32 in that O.J. Simpson. Man, that kid's a good football. Third and one, Jones faked the quarterback draw here at the final 16 seconds. We get the first down, run out of bounds. This is just to get Jones some prep for the future. They have a true freshman quarterback at West Virginia, Danny Embick, who's from Jupiter, Florida, played in the Florida-Georgia All-Star Games. He's a very talented player, but they want to keep him redshirted. There he is. Rashid Marshall, the other quarterback on this West Virginia team, started the season almost a co-starter with Brad Lewis, broke bones in his hand that very first game, might get back sometime in November. Scott McBride transferred, so we've had a lot of quarterback unstable play this year for West Virginia offense that is predicated on quarterback success. And we'll get one more snap here before second. Miami, next game, Temple in here at noon Eastern on November 3rd. Now, Rich Rodriguez told us it may take a year or two longer than he had hoped. And uh, we see some of that coming through tonight, but Rich Rodriguez. His dad tried to teach him how to ride a bike in the morning one day when he was a kid. And Rich didn't pick it up. So you mean his dad stayed there all day. He's one of those guys who's a workaholic, will always work at it. And uh, this is a work in progress. Jones did not go down. The cannon has sounded. He now goes down. Game over. Thursday night football next week is North Carolina, Georgia Tech in Atlanta. Tonight, number one. Just fine. 45-3. Canucks. Avalanche next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com with Jerry Punchley, Corso Kirk Herbstreit, Mike Tirico, sending it a day straighter in Colorado.